exactly right. Meeting call to order at 630. Great. Okay. Um, so, uh, let's see, uh, Simon Weiser, Gina Argento here, Paul Kelterborn I'm here, uh, William Clagsbald. William Clagsbald. See your mic is open. I'm gonna I'm gonna count you. Um, sorry. Are you on camera? Yeah. Oh shit. Mary O'Donnell. I'm here. William Vega. Yo. Rowan Breitner. Hi, I'm here. Kevin Costa. Not on actually. Video. I don't want to be on video. Kevin Costa. No. Um, Aaron Drinkwater. Here. Bill Goldstein. Aaron Yevez. Uh, Arika Ghoul. Did you me? No. Okay. All right, that is a quorum. Thank you, everybody. Good evening. Welcome to the CB1 Transportation Committee for March 23rd, 2023. Um, I'll just start by welcoming and congratulating our new district manager, who is uh, dutifully staffing the boards there at the community board office. Thank you, Joanna. Thank you. And uh, you're welcome. Um, I know you're going to do great. Um, and uh, with that, <clears throat> we can jump into agenda item number one, <clears throat> the co-naming, street co-naming request for Penn Street between Bedford and Wythe Avenues in honor of the former community board's first vice chair, Rabbi Joseph Weber. Uh, this was requested by uh, Councilman Ressler's office on behalf of Yossi Grunwald. Uh, is anyone from Councilman Ressler or, oh, there's Mariana. Hi, Mariana. Um, is Mr. Uh, Grunwald here? He said he would try to join, but I don't know if he did. But I'm I'm happy to speak in support. Um, okay. Is, unless anyone else is, would like to. <laughs> uh, yeah, is there anyone from the community that would like to, that, is here for that item and in, in specifically. Okay, hearing none, Mariana, you have the floor. Um, so hi everyone, my name is Mariana. I'm uh, council member wrestler's chief of staff. And uh, as Eric said, Mr. Grunwald uh, brought to us the idea of renaming, uh, or I should say co-naming a street in honor of Rabbi um, Weber, who as you know, many of you probably know better than I do has a very long history uh, in this community until he passed um, and was chair of the community board and uh, brought Head Start to Williamsburg over 40 years ago and was the director since its inception um, and ran the youth corps as well. Uh, the idea was to rename Penn Street between um, Bedford and White, which I believe is right in proximity to where that Head Start headquarters was. So that's, that's the idea. Okay. <laughs> um, so, um, uh, Rabbi Weber, Weber uh, left the board before I joined, but uh, having attended many community board meetings, uh, I do remember him dutifully serving up at the front. And uh, I know he does have a long, long history in the community and uh, has a deep, uh, deep respect within the community. Um, is there anyone that would like to speak on uh, speak on this issue? Okay, this I will ask for it in that I have, case. I have a question. This isn't on this renaming specifically or co-naming specifically, but yes. does the board have 
sort of a standard by which to evaluate such proposals? Um, well, service to the community, not not a not a, a a rigid standard that I've seen. I don't. I've never seen a criteria for um, like a specific board memo criteria. But it's typically uh, service to the community, um, roots in the community, some um, you know overwhelming. Uh, Presence that warrants uh, the co naming. Um, it's, uh, you know, it comes to the, it comes from the councilman's or council person's office to the community board um, for approval. And then uh, the councilman, or in this case, councilman or council person brings it uh, to the, um, uh, to the city council sometime in the spring. And it's uh, voted and then uh, given to DOT to implement. That's helpful. Thanks. I was just curious. Yeah, sure. I think every each, I mean, we've had a lot of co namings lately, so I think that's an appropriate question. Um, but I think um, in all the cases, there was either, uh, you know, a, a deep um, connection to the community, whether a long time ago or recent. And um, I think we, you know, made our judgments based on that. So. Yeah, Anybody? Like a very. Um, for sure. hey, Simon, is that you? Simon Weiser, am I seeing a 917 number that might be a Weiser? No, okay. Um, all right, uh, in that case, um, and it, would anyone like to make a motion? William, if you're speaking, I can't hear you. You're you're not muted, but I can't hear you. I'll make the motion, Eric. It's Paul. Okay. Okay, Paul. Uh, thank you. William Vega seconds. Okay. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Okay, unanimously passed. So, okay, so um, thank you, Mariana, for uh, for bringing this to us. Uh, please let Mr. Grunwald know the result of tonight's committee meeting. I believe the next committee, the full board meeting, is April eleventh. Excuse me. What 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 was just voted on? Um, was for in regards to what? Uh, I'm sorry, um, uh, street co-naming, but you're not, gotcha. you, okay. So, but for members of the public, you need to be recognized. So, uh, there's a little raise your hand feature and, uh, when it's in order to recognize the public, I will do so. Thank you. Um, what was I saying? Okay. Anyway, so the, the full board meeting will be, uh, the 11th. Um, and we'll vote, uh, the board will vote uh, on approval then, hopefully in time to get it to the city council uh, for action sometime sometime this summer. All right, okay. Thank you all. Thank you, Mariana. Uh, okay, moving right along. Um, Berry Street, Open Street. Uh, this is the, uh, the follow-up design proposal to the last uh, November meeting. Um, and I believe uh, I had initially Emily Weinhoff and Jessica Kronstein, but I believe it's going to be um, uh, David. Uh, well, Kyle. D and Kyle. D and Kyle. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, I'll turn it over to Kyle and um, for the presentation. And uh, and just a note, I, I should have mentioned this at, at the outset. So, you know, we've had Berry Street before us. Um, I, I want to say at least five times now. I think that's I think that's right. Um, this is um, uh, we've uh, we fielded a lot of um, public comments on it. We do have speakers that did sign up. Um, I will be recognizing speakers uh, from the public following uh, specific questions from the committee. 
um, comments from the public will be limited to one minute. And um, uh, this is not to say that everyone will get a chance to speak. Um, the time now is uh, uh, time now is six forty, and we will hear this item no later than uh, until no later than seven forty. Okay, so with that, um, I give it to um, Kyle. Great, thank you, Eric. Good evening, everyone. I'm Kyle Gorman from the city's Department of Transportation. And Eric, I think we've probably been back here many more times than five times over the last three years to talk about um, the very open street. But nonetheless, we are excited to be here tonight um, to continue the conversation about the evolution of this open street. Um, really a tremendous amount of work has really gone into this particular proposal that we're going to go into tonight, not only by the city's Department of Transportation, but all of our partners, community based organizations and mem members of the public at large that have really contributed in a big way to the success of this particular open street. So, with that, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and jump right into the presentation. Um, I'm joined tonight by my colleague, Dee Nelson, who's going to be going through uh, the second half of the presentation, um, and I'll hand it over to him then. Um, all right, so like I said, we're here to give you a quick update on the um, community, uh, sorry, the uh, North Brooklyn Open Streets for Community Board 1. Um, just to do a little bit of level setting and, and kind of uh, giving a quick program update as well as a specific update to the Open Streets in North Brooklyn. Um, Open Streets, as, as many of you know, launched as an emergency response program at the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, you know, to originally facilitate uh, social distancing, economic recovery, uh, more opportunities for open space and uh, pedestrians and cyclists. Um, and the original intent with the program is that the local NYPD precincts would uh, manage it. And given sort of city resources and capacity at the time, uh, the day-to-day -day management actually shifted to our community partner, the North Brooklyn Open Streets Community Coalition. Thanks to a tremendous amount of advocacy um, for open streets, it actually became a permanent program uh, due to legislation passed in 2021. That was Local Law 55. Um, that was signed into law by the previous mayor, Mayor de Blasio, and it is now a permanent program here in New York City. We actually just released um, the permanent rules for the program that just further codifies um, the open streets program as a part of the wider New York City ecosystem. And as a part of that legislation, which actually brings us as to why we're here tonight, um, we are required to evaluate existing and successful open streets and really try to determine what is possible in terms of an evolution from the very tactical, uh, more simple toolkit open streets that's been happening on um, the corridors um, and see what is possible uh, taking a look at the wider DOT public realm and traffic calming toolkit. So, Everything from pedestrian plazas to shared streets, um, street seats, um, opportunities for street furniture, bike parking, planters, greenery, um, and so much more um, are now baked in uh, to the permanent program for open streets. So that's why we're here tonight and have been here before and, and talking with everyone about a design proposal for uh, the open streets in North Brooklyn. Also, thanks to an incredible investment in the open streets program by the mayor and the city council, we have a, a relatively large contract with the Horticultural Society of New York, who actually provides the day-to-day -day, um, management and operations of um, a select number of open streets across the city, including Barry, Barry Street. So they're there setting up the barriers and taking them down on a daily basis, sweeping, cleaning, tending to any horticulture elements throughout the corridor, being our eyes in the street and providing technical assistance, community outreach opportunities, and, and so much more. And that uh, support, thanks to that really incredible investment, is going to continue uh, for years to come on open streets across the city. Um, and like I mentioned, we've been doing a lot of outreach, um, not only here at the community board, but boots on the ground, talking to folks door to door all across these open streets to get a better idea as to how folks want to see these corridors used in the future, what is working, what is not working, what's possible, issues, opportunities, and so much more. Um, so there's been a slew of community surveys, workshops, and other things that I'm going to highlight later on in the presentation. And that's been supplemented by a series of uh, events and different types of programming that DOT has been able to coordinate, as well as our community partners on the ground. And that's been regularly happening for nearly two years now. 
Um, so sort of just to sort of continue the narrative about the successes uh, and opportunities that have come to be with uh, OpenStreets, you know, at the sort of foundation of the program, we're seeing more public space for walking, biking, and programming, and just generally promoting alternative modes uh, rather than vehicles on open streets. Uh, we're also supporting schools. A number of schools across the city participate in the open streets program for outdoor learning, outdoor recreation, safer pickup and drop off operations, and this also includes the very open street uh, where PS84 has been a regular user of the open street um, to supplement uh, the space they need while the playground is under construction. Um, there's also a tremendous amount of uh, social benefits that come from open streets. I cannot really tell you uh, or underscore the incredible uh, community building exercise and undertaking that open streets has been. Um, open streets really brought people together in a really dark time in our city's history. And these people not only came together to, of course, create more open space, but create different types of mutual aid organizations and other support systems to really support the community uh, when other types of resources were not available. So at the core of open streets really is partnership, not only with um, you know, public private partnerships, but also sort of uh, community building partnerships uh, at the grassroots level. Um, we also wanted to make sure that open streets remain vibrant places to promote arts and culture and programming and other types of creative activations um, on the street. Um, one of the more popular events that we we're, were able to bring to the open street was a performance by the Bindle Sift Family Circus. They bring um, what they call the flatbed follies to uh, a number of our open streets, including Barry, um, and give a performance where hundreds of families, kids, and other types of individuals were able to enjoy a really excellent performance by uh, the Bindle Sift Family Circus. We were also able to do another circus performance as well at uh, Bankers Anchor and North 15th Street, in addition to the one pictured here at Barry Street. Um, an incredible facet also of the open streets are the tremendous amount of dog-oriented folks and users that we are seeing on open streets, a number of our partners have hosted events uh, to promote dog businesses, dog organizations, and just owning dogs generally. Um, and obviously people love to also walk their dogs on open streets. So another exciting layer to open streets. Um, so now I'm gonna just briefly go over all of the outreach that we've been able to really uh, undertake over these last few years which has been used to really inform the proposal that D is gonna go into next. So to briefly summarize all of our outreach efforts to date, um, as I mentioned, we've been a sort of recurring regular character, I like to say here at Community Board One on the Transportation Committee, uh, appearing a number of times in 2020, 2021, 2022, and of course now here in 2023. Um, at the sort of more pandemic part of the height of the pandemic, I should say really back in 2020, we did actually start to do community outreach. That's when it formally launched uh, related to this particular open street. We first launched a, a feedback survey that was uh, promoted online as well as um, surveys and opportunities to do the survey in person on street. And we heard from over 2000 individuals across the community. And I'll highlight the results of that uh, in just a few seconds. We've also been able to do a series of both virtual and in-person design workshops, um, building on the feedback uh, that was offered in the survey and other types of outreach that we've been able to do. So the first of the workshops were virtually held back in February 2021, two of which were held via Zoom. Um, and then we have held uh, three in-person workshops the first being back in May 2022, and then two recently just a few weeks ago, uh, the first on January 31st and March 7th, um, where we presented the full design proposal to the community um, to get their feedback. Um, the intent of the workshop on March 7th uh, was targeted to Spanish only uh, speaking individuals, and we had translators uh, and in, uh, interpreters and translated materials, I should say, uh, for that workshop. Uh, we've also been doing a lot of, like I said, boots on the ground, knocking on doors, talking to businesses and other types of merchants along these open streets, doing different types of merchant surveys to better understand, you know, what are their thoughts on open streets, what are their delivery needs, loading uh, pickups, drop-offs, uh, what are their waste hauling needs um, to better make understand uh, all of that information to make more informed decisions about how uh, best 
to design the curb. Um, so in addition to the survey, we've also been doing a lot of just um, individual meetings with partners, whether it be at site visits um, or on Zoom, to talk through the project proposal, um, go over any nuanced details to make sure that loading docks are still accessible, loading zones are going to be there, working to make sure that deliveristas and other type of delivery infrastructure is also supported, uh, and just you know ensuring that commerce uh, continues in an efficient way on open streets. And then in addition to all of that, like I said, we've been doing other types of uh, stakeholder engagement, whether that be um, surveying folks on the streets, flyering, uh, going door to door, uh, making sure that we're doing interagency coordination with the fire department, NYPD, uh, other agencies like the mayor's office of film um, and media, and, and so on. Um, and that has been on a continuous basis since uh, 2020. Um, so, like I said, I wanted to just briefly highlight all of the feedback that we heard in these workshops, which I said is, uh, you know, being used and informs the design proposal. Um, so, we heard from over 2,000 individuals on the survey um, that was hosted in 2021. Um, pedestrians really are the king of our, kings and queens, I should say, of our streets um, here in New York City. Over 80% of people indicate that they are using open streets while walking. Uh, this is a daily regular fixture that people have incorporated in their day-to-day -day lives with over three quarters of individuals saying that they're visiting these open streets on a nearly daily or several times a week basis. Um, and only a quarter of individuals indicated that they're actually using this open street to drive, park, um, or uh, get them from local access. Um, on the survey, we asked folks uh, the closest intersection to where they live, and 93% of folks who took the survey indicated that they did indeed live here in Community Board 1, and a full 40% uh, lived on some of the existing open streets that were in place back in 2021. Um, so in order to build on um, some of the feedback that we got in the surveys, we held two virtual workshops on Zoom um, and identified uh, just a number of issues and opportunities uh, related to the tactical open street and a better understanding of how folks wanted to see these corridors used in the future. Um, people highlighted how this has become an amazing amenity and a, and a community hub for people during the pandemic. Um, the local traffic requirements on the new open street makes it quieter and safer for pedestrians and cyclists. Uh, but, you know, the tactical um, open street had its limitations. There needs to be better signage, clarity of access, and, and different types of infrastructure to better achieve the outcomes that we want to, uh, you know, have open streets result in. Um, and of course, as is the case even before the pandemic, the reported instances of dangerous driving and other general traffic safety concerns that people would uh, like us to consider. Um, then back in May 2022, um, we started to present some high-level design concepts to the public for um, everyone's um, feedback. Uh, there was a, a big desire to codify a solution uh, that allows for two-way cycling as well as bike and pedestrian priority and making sure that we have strong connections between existing green spaces. Um, Excuse me. Can someone, yeah, the three people that have it muted, I can hardly hear what Kyle's saying. Please mute yourselves. Thank you. Thank you, William. Um, so continuing on, uh, some of the other items that people ask for is more dedicated loading and delivery space, uh, keeping the local corridor facets and reducing as much street traffic as possible, and uh, you know a lot of excitement with thinking beyond the barrier and other opportunities for new street furniture and public realm amenities. Um, and then um, as some of the folks who are on the call tonight know, um, who got a chance to visit us at the workshops that we held, um, back in March and, and January, uh, people really responded positively to the open street proposal that uh, we presented to the community. Um, some of the areas for improvement that uh, the community flagged for us is request for more street furniture, which could come as uh, bike crowds, planters, seating, and granite blocks, other mid-block traffic calming elements, um, alternatives to metal barriers, people, you know, we are, as, trying to evolve and ease away from them, but we don't have the perfect solution yet. Um, there's, you know, I'm sorry, Kyle. Sorry, Kyle. 7188-whatever-whatever-80, please mute yourself on the phone. We also have Esther Bout. Yeah, or Joanna, if you could just mute everybody except Kyle and Dee, that would be fantastic. Thank you, Kyle. Please continue. Thank you, Eric. Um, 
And then, uh, like I said, is uh, there was also, like I said, um, support for two-way cycling and, and more pedestrian-oriented infrastructure uh, and a desire to see further treatments um, at the intersection or where uh, cross streets are crossing over the very open street. Um, and with that, I'm going to actually stop sharing my screen and I'm going to hand it over to Dee, who's going to walk us through the remainder of this proposal. Sorry, and I just got... It's not letting me share my screen. Uh, one second. Um, okay. It's making me close to share. Back with Simon. I'll just... I'll just... I'll just share my screen and, and let's just walk through that way. Okay. Um, <clears throat> thanks. I'm sorry, was that was that you, Simon? Did you just say something? Did I just yeah, say yeah, it's me. Okay. Eight one two is my number. Okay. Seven one eight. So eight one two seven nine eight zero. Yeah. Okay. Seven Can nine you mute? Eight, oh. it's, it's, yeah, I'm muting. It's okay. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead, Dave. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Sorry about that technical issue. Um, so, uh, Barry is a safe streets for senior priority area. Um, so, a big hallmark of the design uh, that we've presented in the past, and are showing the like tweaks to it based off of that uh, workshop feedback. And the last time we presented to CB1, um, you know, our probably the number one priority of this design overall is uh, pedestrian priority, pedestrian safety. Um, and then, you know, as Kyle stated, uh, working through, um, you know, those hiccups with when we had to rapidly deploy open streets and are now trying to mature um, the program uh, post pandemic. You can go to the um, next slide, Kyle. Um, so we have, um, a sensor that 1 of the sensors that we're piloting, um. For data collection, uh, as New York city DOT, and so this actually tracks the path of different, uh, roadway users. As they cross through the intersection, this is at North 6th and Barry. And so the diagram on the left shows pedestrian paths through the intersection. You can see it's very heavy. On the cross street, um, on the far side of the intersection, it's partially not captured by the sensor. That's why it has sort of a sharp V shape. But you can see on the other leg um, that you know the trips along North Sixth uh, tend to be along the crosswalk. But on Barry, where we have the open street operations, you see not only more pedestrian trips, uh, but a pretty even split between using the roadway. Um, and using the sidewalk, which is one of the reasons why we're trying to strengthen this program is that we've seen this increase in pedestrian usage. Um, and that's really can only be accommodated in the roadbed. The sidewalks, uh, would be insufficient. Um, the only reason for the gap in there is the barrier, right? Otherwise, um, all the way through the intersection would be full. Um, and then on the right, you can see, um, the path of. Bicyclists, uh, for the most part, um, and the important thing there is, is about 20% of the trips have been, um. By bikes going southbound, which is technically allowed and we're formalizing here, but 1 of the issues again, design wise with having to deploy the open street rapidly when we were in the pandemic is that, um. The bike lane being on the left side of the roadway and allowing to a cycling creates a degree of confusion. Um, and poor communication in terms of what's on the ground, uh, and what users are trying to do in terms of interpreting that and navigating the space. Uh, so, you know, this allows, uh, our design proposal allows cyclists to be stay to the right predominantly, um, and clarifies a lot of that confusion that can lead to conflicts. Um, and just disagreement about how to navigate the space because we were dealing with old markings and new operations. And so our design proposal brings the design up to the actual intended uh, and legal use of the space. So <clears throat> as we 
move away from such a strong reliance on um, the barricades as the way to uh, limit access for just local access onto each block um, without completely removing the barricades in the immediacy. Um, the way that we're accomplishing this is uh, what the agency did a lot of last year and the year prior for our bike boulevards program, which is intermittent uh, one-way reversals just to prevent traffic from building up as those tributaries of cross streets begin to like feed the river of Barry, um, you know, the traffic volumes pick up block by block. And by having, you know, intermittent uh, one-way reversals, you prevent that buildup of through traffic from being able to occur while still maintaining everybody having uh, convenient access to the blocks. Uh, and we are pushing for always having at least two blocks in the reversal so that mm, there's a discouraging factor to scoff laws and people just out of convenience trying to, you know, trick it through one block. Um, so our previous proposal that we'd shown to CB1 had uh, some one block uh, sections in there. And that's one difference to highlight um, from the last time we presented is that we have consolidated the reversals into three sets of two block reversals. And one of the other reasons why we changed this is some of the complaints we heard about diversion. So, you know, this actually limits the amount of diversions, the amount of driving around um, compared to what we had previously shown. Um, so this is, allows for more direct paths for drivers while still getting the safety and uh, traffic volume benefits we need for the open street. Um, and formal or enhancing pedestrian safety throughout the whole corridor, making Barry all the way from North 12th to Broadway a two-way cycling facility. Um, <clears throat> and we'll get into some details at a site-specific level, but again, uh, we presented before those neighborhood loading zones as a solution for truck uh, and freight access for the corridor, um, as well as passenger pickup and drop off, uh, and also keeping the open street open for people to enjoy it because we've previously had an issue with a lot of box trucks um, when making deliveries, parking in the middle of the intersection uh, and limiting access. Um, Traffic calming elements throughout the whole corridor, uh, and then some additional benefits sort of off the Barry corridor to strengthen the connections to Domino and McCarran Parks. Um, and then uh, the Bankers Anchor Plaza closing uh, one leg of North 15th. Go ahead, Kyle. Oh. Um, so again, just highlighting some of the changes from the last time we presented, they're all very uh, minor, but uh, we tweaked the geometry of the gateway treatments at the ends of the block on Broadway. Um, there's a more robust uh, rubber speed bump that'll be uh, between the bike gateways and the receiving travel lane um, for a little bit more safety for the contraflow cyclists. Uh, while still not being a trip hazard or an impediment to pedestrians. Um, we uh, are sort of strengthening the relationship with the neighborhood loading zones um, and the pedestrian priority by uh, actually putting up signs that are telling box trucks basically to use the loading zones um, and for only smaller vehicles to enter onto Barry. And that's great because with uh, people walking and biking and enjoying the space, larger vehicles aren't as compatible anymore. Uh, and uh, so we're doing it with regulatory signage instead of such a like um, ham-fisted physical approach because we wanna make sure that there's no uh, obstacle uh, obstruction at all for emergency and public safety response. Uh, so FDNY can still turn into the blocks. Um, so we'll get into that at a site specific level, um, adding what's essentially a, a painted short term in house way of treating intersections as 
raised intersections and speed tables to try to call attention <clears throat> mainly to uh, two conditions on the corridor. One that we heard a lot that South 6th and North 1st doesn't have crosswalks across Barry. Um, <clears throat> and then also that uh, the traffic reversals will need to have attention called to them. So people, when people are especially getting used to this as a new um, operation on the corridor. Uh, and then at the end of the corridor, so I'll highlight all of those as we go through block by block. And then these tweaks of sort of simplifying the design and making the changes that we heard in both the workshops and um, from our last CB presentation actually ended up adding two more parking spaces per block from the previous proposal. So we've added parking um, while still maintaining, and if anything, increasing the amount of pedestrian priority um, and cyclist safety. So <clears throat> starting through the corridor, uh, you can see that the first reversal goes from South 6th to Broadway. Uh, the left turn bay on Broadway gets replaced with a pedestrian refuge island because there would no longer be a left turn from eastbound Broadway onto the corridor. Um, the pinkish coral, uh, coral color would be those painted intersection treatments, just calling attention to South 6, which doesn't have crosswalks across it. Um, South 5th, where traffic flow is reversed. So um, approaching on South 5th, you could take a right or a left, but there's no traffic entering into the intersection from Barry. So we've targeted using this treatment at places where we really wanna call attention, that there's something unusual happening, making sure nobody uh, approaches it and just thinks it's Barry as usual. Um, you can advance, go. No. Um, so I guess jumping into a cross section to just show some of the details of the gateway treatments. Um, for the like first 40 feet of the street on either side, we'll have a uh, painted pedestrian space marked with the little plastic post, the flexible delineators uh, in DOT jargon. Um, on each side of the intersection, one will have bike parking and the other one will have uh, landscaping in the uh, raised planters and granite blocks uh, to provide some seating and some beauty to the corridor. Um, and then we'll have that bicycle gateway treatment for the contraflow approach. So it's very clear to everyone that bikes are moving in two directions at the point where, you know, everyone needs to interact at the intersection. We have a designated spot where we're saying, hey, cyclists, this is where you're expected to be. Uh, and we'll put a rubber speed hump between where the motor vehicles will be turning into the street and where bikes will be waiting. Um, just to sort of formalize things only at the intersection while allowing the majority of the street to sort of operate socially where everyone can tell, you know, there's two people riding abreast or there's a family with small kids walking a dog, you know, you move out of the way just as you do on any sidewalk based off of um, the social reality of the street. Um, so uh, advancing up the corridor, um, the whole street will be signed as a five mile per hour corridor. Again, 24 hours a day, vehicles are allowed to enter the street. It's just only for local access uh, to park on your block, to pick somebody up who has you know mobility issues and you really need to pull right up and double park in front of the door. All of that's still allowed. Um, what we're just trying to do here is discourage through traffic, people using Barry to go longer distances. Um, and keeping speed slow and sort of, again, at a social level, think how a parking lot works, right? You see somebody pushing with a cart, you just get out of the way. That's what we're aiming for um, because the speeds are lower, the speed hump that's on South 1st uh, after the streets repaved, um, which uh, is our goal. It's uh, scheduled to um, be repaved so that we have a nice smooth surface uh, that looks really uh, nice for the neighborhood to put down the new markings. We wouldn't be uh, replacing that speed hump because we have other uh, traffic calming devices that'll keep the street slower than uh, the speed humps designed. <clears throat> 
And uh, you can see again, this like repeating pattern of the gateway treatments at Grand Street, there's a, a new traffic signal that will be coordinating with the construction at PS84 um, and able to get in otherwise. Uh, and we've really taken an opportunity with this project to make sure that that traffic signal doesn't get delayed any longer than it uh, already has been due to construction at the school. Um, and we've reversed this grand to metropolitan section as the next reversal in the corridor uh, because it's the steepest part of Barry and um, had some of the highest speeds as a result. And so by making it uphill, we make sure that it's safe um, for the people mm -hmm. walking in the street, especially because it's so close to the school um, and been in close communication with them about the plan. Um, jump to the next. Uh, and then, so highlighting one changes is that uh, we wanted to make sure some of the diversions in order to get to and from the parking garage between North 1st and North 3rd um, was one of the things we heard complaints about. And when we went back uh, in response to those and really looked at the diversions from certain directions, um, we did sort of see some opportunities for improvement. And so that's when we did the consolidated reversal from North 7th to North 5th. So there's better traffic flow. We're not putting more trips onto the network, uh, a lot more turns and you know, improving the safety on Barry, but adding turns on other streets that could create uh, pedestrian safety problems there. Mm -hmm. um, and so, <clears throat> you know, again, like at North 5th, uh, there it'll be two way for cyclists, but it'll be in and in um, for motor vehicles, both northbound and southbound, uh, having to turn on to North 5th. So really, again, using this intersection color treatment so that everybody's aware, nobody could be absent-minded. There'll also be the usual host of signs saying, do not enter, and that you have to turn um, throughout the corridor. Uh, and then we have been in close communication with all the uh, commercial, Partners that have a more unique freight uh, and delivery needs, like partners, which sometimes needs to receive uh, large deliveries in their loading dock. Um, and so, you know, I've specifically accommodated them uh, in the design. Uh, it's just one example of how, you know, we've really tried to strive to make sure that throughout the corridor we're. Um, maintaining uh, all those site specific needs and that we're not just coming in and saying, you know, this is what Barry is now. Uh, there's a lot of uh, detail work to make sure that this is a functional uh, street. Go ahead, Kyle. Okay, um, so uh, on the northernmost part of the section, uh, calling out here again, how the neighborhood loading zones are placed on essentially the far side of every block. So when a truck approaches Barry, uh, it'll be very clear for them that they'll just pull ahead uh, or you know, a, a regular for hire vehicle um, that doesn't need to specifically access an individual property, um, like if somebody has mobility needs. Uh, you know, it'll be very clear that there's a designated space that they can pull right ahead into and not have to block the intersection. Um, again, for smaller vehicles, it's great. You can turn on to Barry as normal. What we're really trying to prevent are those like larger box trucks um, and giving them a designated space. The blocks are only 200 feet long on Barry. So nobody is more than 100 feet from each business and the realities of delivery in New York City. You know, even when you're double parking on a corridor, you're often that far away to begin with. So by creating a designated space, we think that this is actually a benefit to everyone. Oh. Um, and then there's a new stop sign installed on uh, 10th Street, which we've coordinated along with this project. So just want to call attention to that. And then the, the corridor, uh, the open street will end at North 12th. But if you look closely, we're still trying to create a larger entrance into the park there where previously the crosswalk had only been uh, for the that's where there's the double loaded um, sidewalk. It's like sidewalk landscaping sidewalk in front of the tennis courts. 
we've widened that crosswalk at both Barry and at Bedford um, to really make sure that there's a nice uh, gateway to McCarran. Um, and then continuing up there, because we want this to function as, I should have mentioned last year as part of this project, when it got delayed, we moved forward because Kent Avenue was repaved with adding a new crossing at Grand Street um, into uh, Domino Park. I'm sure most people here are aware of how uh, unpleasant that crossing was. And so this project, uh, one big part was again, thinking about these connections to the park because Barry sort of conveniently connects the two major parks in North Brooklyn or in uh, Northern Williamsburg, the North side and the South side. Uh, and so additionally here, we're pursuing adding new crossings um, at the pathway that runs between the tennis courts and the automotive high school um, to that mid block entrance along uh, the park and tying it into North 14th street. Um, so a, an additional set of new crossings um, because there's about 1400 feet on both streets where there's no mark crossing point and especially that one on Bedford mid block is really high volume on the weekends. There's just tons of people crossing there. Um, so since we're going to be creating even more pedestrian demand, we really want to make sure that we're adding safety there. And then the new plaza by closing uh, 15th street, uh, there's really no reason to turn. It's a harder turn to make. Uh, it doesn't really take you anywhere that Banker street doesn't take you. We've been able to partner with Broadway stages and the church, uh, communicating with them about their needs uh, and have created a really nice large plaza there, new crossings, um, and then an extension where Brooklyn Brewery is working on their new site on the far side of that intersection. Um, so really in creating a lot of new pedestrian space, um, especially as that intersection set to change with a lot of new development uh, and bring a lot more people there. Uh, you know, adding those new crossings, which really wouldn't work um, just due to the angles and the fact that we had to make sure that uh, larger trucks, because this is in the IBZ, are still able to make turns without creating these new pedestrian spaces. It would have been very hard to create safe crossings. Um, and then, yeah, along with that, um, switching the bike lane that runs from North 12th to Lorimer from a left side bike lane to a right side bike lane which will remove uh, a handful of intersection conflicts at like North 13th, North 14th, et cetera. Uh -huh. So that's a real benefit as well. So just some ideas of what the Banker's Anchor Plaza will look like. It's where we put the epoxy gravel surface down, where we sort of make the um, asphalt appear more like a landscaping material um, and, uh, we'll be adding granite blocks, planters, uh, movable seating that can be put away at night, um, and have, you know, a very nice programmable space. Uh, this, as many people know, is on, uh, North 5th. So, uh, a very similar concept where we've closed a redundant, uh, leg of an intersection in front of a church in the neighborhood. Um, so just going over next steps, um, everyone please participate in Car Free Earth Day uh, on the 22nd of next month. Um, we'll be starting repaving sometime in May. Um, the repaving schedule is very weather dependent, so it's hard to have a set date quite yet. But it's scheduled uh, to begin in May. We'll repave from South First, for, South Fourth, all the way to North Twelfth. Um, while that repaving work is happening, we'll get the signal installed at Grand uh, at the school. That way, um, we're putting fresh asphalt over all the underground utility work that has to happen. Um, and then, as soon as the repaving is complete, we'll begin implementation with the markings and the signage changes. And then, as always with our SIP projects. The agency will be making sure to do evaluation and public and receive public feedback um, so that we can ongoingly uh, tweak the design and the operations of the space uh, to be responsive to any issues that might arise. 
Um, <clears throat> and then again, with as with any of our in-house projects, uh, you know, we have a limited set of materials and tools that we can do um, when we're just implementing quickly uh, as the city itself. Um, but we'll begin the work of envisioning the long-term future of Barry uh, in a capital build-out. So thank you. And with that, I guess. Yeah, we'll turn it back to you, Eric. Thank you so much, everyone. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Dee and Carl. Um, so, um, so when we received uh, the um, the preview uh, this morning on uh, on this item, you know, at the at the November meeting, uh, the direction changes were taken out, and uh, I see that they're back now. And I know that you've been in touch with Partners Coffee, but I'm wondering, do they understand that the um, uh, the direction change is back in? First of all. Um, I know they said uh, uh, somebody had uh, responded to them that the, the truck study uh, showed that they could make the turns, um, but um, you know I'm I don't know I'm dubious first of all, and then second of all, uh, it from the the design on the um, on the preview it looks like you put the 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 bike lanes on the loading their loading zone side of the street and they've already been having uh they've been having conflicts with cyclists from the beginning and so i'm just wondering what the logic was to put it on the east side of the street with the with the loading zone and um and i just want to make sure that the bulb outs uh that are at the corners of uh, north six and north seven those are um uh those are paint treatments right those are not raised bulb outs Yep. Correct. Um, but Eric, just a clarifying question. So I just yeah. double checked our um, November presentation and everything related to the reversals uh, was still there, including on the block where partners was. So we haven't ever, um, we haven't ever changed that. Um, and it, we did say that there were potentially some future tweaks that would come um, when we spoke in November, but um, we didn't talk about changing the reversal there. And because I'll let D answer some of the more technical side of things, but you know, partners have signed off on uh, this proposal. We've gone back and forth with them in addition to doing a site visit. So um, we are certain that they're Wait, aware. A, a site visit. visit since the one that we did, Kyle, the one that I was at? No, so that was the site visit that we did. And then we right. did a handful of Zoom meetings and as well as some email correspondence as well. With partners? With partners. Zoom meetings with partners since that walkthrough? Correct. Right, so they are aware that this direction change is still happening. Yep, I mean, they put in the email that this proposal uh, poses no issues for their operations. Okay, um, so I'll just, as, as you go forward, I'll just, uh, you know, continue. I hope that you'll continue that conversation. Um, if any problems arise, I'm still concerned that the, the bike lanes are on that loading zone side of the street, but I realize it's a large corridor and um, it's hard to accommodate one business along that entire corridor, but it is about cyclist safety. So that's just keep that in mind. And then um, I just wanna make sure that no planters or blocks or anything go on the corners of North uh, 6th or North 7th that are gonna make it difficult for those trucks to make that, uh, make that turn. Uh, and then up at Banker's Anchor, um, so that looks all fine. Um, I, I know that you've reached out, well, you've said that you reached out to Broadway Stages and I haven't um, heard anything from Gina who's on the call or Tony um, with concerns about that. We walked, we went through this a while back. So I know that we, we talked to the church and we did everything right. And I, I love Banker's Anchor. So let me just say that for the record. But I am a little concerned, and I was talking to Karen Nieves earlier today, that the um, on uh, the banker turn onto North 15th um, when um, uh, when the brewery gets happening on that uh, in full swing on that that triangle, and then um, uh, the smoked fish 
if they're bringing in trucks like that that triangle that painted triangle now the map is not the territory so maybe it's not as large as it looks on the diagram but it looks fairly substantial and i just i just want to make sure that it's um it's going to be able to accommodate now it's a i think that that angle is probably about you know maybe like 160 to make that left turn onto uh, onto 15th off banker, but, um, I just, I just want to make sure that, um, um, that trucks are going to be able to make that without, you know, any pedestrian conflicts or, or anything like that. So deal we in on that piece, but, uh, um, Broadway stages, uh, the seafood company and uh, Brooklyn brewery have also, uh, independently, we've met with them to discuss this proposal. Yeah, and I'll say for the design uh, at Partners, the bulb outs at 6th and 7th <clears throat> are uh, a slightly different shape, a more generous shape for the turn than along the rest of the corridor for that reason. Um, so we'll still be able to put items in there, uh, you know, because we've actually shrunk the footprint of them to accommodate Partners. Uh, and they've seen detailed modeling for a vehicle as large as they say they would ever get uh, deliveries. Um, and then same thing for at Banker's Anchor. We've modeled that turn generously for tractor trailers to still be able to make it. And that's the appearance that it seems almost unbelievable that that would be the case is really benefited or created by uh, creating these large ped spaces but you pretty much said it, it's a pretty slight angle of the turn. Uh, so by filling in as much space as we could with ped space while still preserving that tractor trailer movement, uh, we've created a space that really looks um, pedestrian inviting uh, while still accommodating slow speed safe truck turns. Sorry, okay, uh, okay. Uh, thank you. Um, committee, I see Kevin, you had your hand up. I can't see hands because it's, I'm doing three things at once here, but, um, uh, Kevin Costa. Awesome. Um, thanks Eric. Um, thanks D thanks Kyle for being here for the, um, millionth time. Um, as you guys have mentioned, you've done quite a, quite a bit of outreach workshops coming to the transportation community over the last couple of years. And, um, and while it's been really great to, you know, really provide feedback, um, you know, I think that the time has come to truly like implement changes on this street. Um, we've been waiting for far too long. We've been essentially waiting since the open street began in 2020 to have any sort of improvements in the space. Um, so I really want to, you know, drive home the point that implementation is key and it needs to happen as soon as possible. So I, I saw that in the presentation, it said, you know, summer slash fall implementation. And there were a couple of bullet points under that, but I hope that that means early summer. I hope that that means as soon as the repaving is done, because that is absolutely like critical at this point, we've been waiting for, for three years and, you know, the time to act is now and like, I appreciate the fact that you've integrated so much of the community's feedback, but there's an overwhelming majority of the community that is saying, we love open streets. We want it to happen. We want them to be even better to be enhanced and nothing has happened. You know, we're still at the exact same place that we were three years ago. So I'll put a pin in that for now. Um, I did want to mention a couple of things that I think are really great about the uh, proposal and then also suggest a couple of things to improve upon. Um, I think that it's really great that the signal on Granite Berry was implemented, that there's some um, poxy gravel in certain intersections, the speed humps will all look great, um, and the traffic reversals. I think that those are all really strong elements of this um, proposal. Um, I, I do think that the ContraFlow bike lane, I love the ContraFlow bike lane, but I would like to see all of it be painted green, not just the chevrons in the middle of the street space. Um, and, 
And I think that there, you know, is, is a really big element that is missing here, which is like the mid block crossings, especially for the more pedestrian heavy streets. There's a number of them that could really benefit from a mid block, um, intersection. So that's just like kind of my two cents, um, just to get the conversation flowing. I know that, um, there are lots of community members who are on this call tonight, um, that have a lot more to add and can probably articulate it 10 times better than I can. So I'm looking forward to hearing all their thoughts, but overall, we need to get this done. We need it to start earlier than later. And we've been talking to you guys for a really, really long time. Kyle, I know you're tired of listening to us time and time and time again. So please, please, um, I can't advocate more strongly for implementation to happen as soon as possible. June at the, at the latest, but, um, okay. but thank yes. you, Kevin. All's in your court. Thank so you. So, Eric, you have uh, board members, myself and Paul, and Br Bronham as committee members with their hands raised. Thank you, William. Uh, DOT, any quick response? I would just say that, um, you know, this is not the end all be all. Dee mentioned it at the, the, the end of the presentation that, um, you know, we are committed to making any tweaks and additions as, as needed and then continuing to approve upon this proposal. Um, and we are also eager to get this on the ground. Um, I would love to see it um, uh, implemented, um, and it will be implemented uh, this year. We are really confident to say that, um, uh, followed by a huge repaving project. So um, D and I and the rest of the public safety team will will surely get it in the ground as soon as we physically can. Great, thank you, Paul Keltenborn. Sorry, Eric, one, one more question. I know that you would put like a hard stop for 740, but given that the presentation was so long, is there any, any more time that we can spend on this? I, I'll leave that to your discretion, but I really think that 740 would be a real injustice to most of the people on this call. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't expect the presentation to, to be, uh, as long as it was. So, uh. I'll, I'll be a little liberal. I won't say how liberal, but, um, we are probably going to move on at 8 for sure. Uh, and, um, anyway, uh, Paul, thank you, Kevin. Paul. Keltenborn? Yeah, I'll be, I'll be brief. Uh, thanks everyone. I, you know, agree with all of Kevin's comments. Um, and, um, especially appreciate the street, uh, directional changes. I think those will really help kind of like change the dynamic between people trying to use the open street and cars. Um, two things I wanted to mention, you know, from my experience with Cooper Park and the Sharon open street, the neighborhood loading zones are um, great. I think that the, you know, the way they're implemented, at least around Cooper with just a small sign, um, doesn't make them super visible. And I think, you know, sort of like adherence to them as loading zones um, has been a little bit spotty. And if there's a way to do something to the pavement or like really highlight them um, as um, for that purpose, I think that would like go, really go a long way. And, um, and then the second comment is just also, yeah, about the mid block sort of intervention. I know they're short blocks, so maybe, you know, you don't think there's as much of a need to do something like hugs, but, um, you know, if there's the, an opportunity to add any street furniture or something, especially if you're trying to make it safer for seniors, as you said, in 1 of the slides, having places to sit, rest, socialize those kinds of things. Um, and especially since you also mentioned that you found ways to add additional 2 space, 2 parking spaces per. Um, block, it seems like maybe you could take at least some of those and put some kind of like street furniture hug type thing um, to make it more of a place, you know, like do more placemaking and less of just a place to kind of like pass through. Um, so I'll leave it there. Those are my comments. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Um, sorry, one second. Uh, block treatments. You got it. Okay. Uh, Bronwyn. Yeah, thank you, Eric. And, um, thanks to 
Kyle and Dee for being here tonight. Um, I really appreciate it, especially the, the whole presentation, but like the early end of the presentation of how much outreach you have done. I've been at many of those meetings and many of those workshops. There's been so much opportunity for feedback. I said it in, I guess it was November um, when you announced that there would be another community public in-person feedback session in January, like, let's just get this done. Um, I'm happy to see how much of the community feedback you have integrated into the revisions. I'm happy to see. I don't think those mid block um, paintings for the bicycle lane indications were there in an earlier iteration. Um, and I also support the sort of continuous green paint on the street. I also wonder, I think the, the traffic reversal is um, a really important part of this proposal and I I support that. I think um, reversing for the two blocks as you've done makes it is smart um, to extend the distance for cars to travel in that one direction, whichever direction it might be. Um, and I think what that does, as you know, is it it sort of prevents the conflict that happens for cars driving down the street continuously from end to end of Barry. What I find for me with the bike merged with pedestrians in the open street, irrespective of the cars, right? There's to me right now, there's conflict between car, pedestrian and bike um, at, on any given block. And um, so reversing the travel direction helps, I think, in the conflict between car and bike pedestrian. But I also still feel that there's an opportunity for conflict uh, between pedestrian and cyclist in the way that it's designed now, especially with the green painting in each direction. Um, so that it's unclear where pedestrians are really supposed to be by the marking. So I would advocate in the next iteration of this, which I think of course should not um, hold up the implementation of any of this. I think we should go, go, go. Um, but some consideration like I don't know if it's more like what's happening under Meeker where you have a clustered bike lane in two directions and then a clustered pedestrian zone on the other side um, but some way of sort of using the street street design to make it clear where pedestrians are meant to be and where bicyc bicyclists are supposed to be um, I also am fully in support of the idea of mid-block um, implementation with bulb outs or hugs and um, you know, seating, you know, plaza space, uh, boulders, plantings, things like that to encourage pedestrian use and pedestrian lingering in the street because the it's wonderful for walking and biking, but it's also a great destination for sitting. Um, and I'm so happy that you're putting a crosswalk at North 14th by the park. I am all over this area with my kids on bikes and as pedestrians all the time. And that is like such a crazy intersection right there by Automotive High School. So. Thank you for putting that in. Um, I would love to see a stop sign there as well at that crosswalk to make it even e easier to cross that long block, especially on Bedford. Um, so that's it for me. Thank you. And oh, question. So you said this the, it, in entirety, you expect this will be implemented 2023? The, the repaving and the whole, the whole SIP. That is the expectation. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Brahman. Um, William. Uh, thank you. I'll be very quick so the public can have their moments. Um, I believe uh, just like all of my uh, con um, board members or committee members. Let's go, 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 go. And it's really smart to reverse uh, traffic. I, I really think that's the smartest move. So um, I, I yield the rest of my time. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, William. Um, I will. Okay, so I'm going to do this. I see um, other board members that are not on the committee. I'm going to recognize them. Then I'm going to hear a statement from Senator Gonzalez's office, uh, and then we'll do one minute from uh, from the public, just so folks know where we're at. Um, and I'll try to get as many of you in as we can, but um, it's. We got a lot today. So anyway, uh, so anyway, thank you for that. Um, uh, Katie Horowitz. Thank you, Eric. I won't take much time either. Um, I just wanted to, to, to share that, you know, I think that, uh, this plan also really exemplifies, um, kind of the trajectory of open streets, right? Where in like year one that, you know, ever, it was sort of chaotic. And then there was like 
uh, that they brought the horticultural society in to help with management. And now we're kind of really seeing the, the fuller um, realization of the concept of this project, which is really exciting. Um, I know a lot of people are going to have comments about Barry. So I also just wanted to get in some comments about Banker's Anchor, which is part of this, um, you know, that really is a gem. Um, within the open streets and public plazas network uh, here in North Brooklyn. Um, so I wanted to kind of take a moment to say, like, that's a really big deal to have that move to a 24 7 public plaza for our area. Um, and so, you know, we at, at the North Brooklyn Parks Alliance, we've been working with DOT and, and the open streets community to really um, think about how we can activate it um, and just wanted to throw it out to the community as well. If you have ideas about how to really um, make that space into an active community space, always feel free to reach out to us. And with that, I yield my time. Thanks, Katie. Um, uh, Eric, Eric Miranda yes. from Emily Gallagher's office has her hand raised. So I, I saw that too. Um, so I don't see any other board members with their hands up. So we're going to move on. And um, uh, so, sorry, one second, bear with me. Uh, Ms. Maverick, did I see you? There you are. Yes. Hi, thank you so much. Yes. Marissa Maverick, Director of Community Affairs and Special Projects for State Senator Kristen Gonzalez. The Senator wanted me to come on tonight to read a statement of support um, in terms of some of the community asks of Barry Street. Senator Kristen Gonzalez has been closely following the development of this plan and our office has participated in community workshop sessions held by DOT and has separately engaged with community leaders regarding the key needs of the neighborhood and the design aspects that are most vital to this project. Senator Gonzalez stands with DOT's community partner, the North Brooklyn Open Streets Community Coalition, in supporting the community ask gathered throughout feedback sessions. The Senator urges the DOT to consider the ask consolidated by the coalition and wishes to highlight these key improvements. The implementation of a continuous and clearly marked contraflow bike lane with adequate barriers. The Senator understands that the June 2022 proposal put forth by TOT for this project displayed the use of a protective island and double barriers to protect cyclists from potential head on collisions with vehicles. This design has since been removed from subsequent proposals, and I do understand there were some explanations for that this evening. However, this still leaves cyclists more vulnerable. The creation of mid block curb extensions on every block throughout the corridor. The, the application of a shared space color marking across each intersection, which was also originally included in the June 2022 proposal, but has since been removed. And I'm certainly happy to hear about the in this presentation this evening about the coordination with PS84. However, there are certain other considerations that would more effectively meet the school's specific needs, including extending the open street hours to 7 a.m., as I understand there has been some discussion around that, uh, to ensure that students and parents have safe passage. And above all, to back some of the calls that we've already heard this evening, Senator Gonzalez also must stress that the implementation of this plan must go through without further delay, as the community has already waited long enough for this essential design, which will improve health, safety, opportunities, and the well being of residents, organizations, and businesses. Thank you all very much for your time tonight. Uh Thank you, Ms. Maverick. And if you would be so kind as to email that statement um, to uh, to my, I know you have my email because I just talked to you. Um, uh, but please, uh, please uh, copy the board office on it for transparency, and I'll make it part of the record since that's a lot to summarize in our report. Uh, thank but thank you, thank you for coming, uh, and thank the senator, uh, Ms. Miranda Augustine of uh, Assemblywoman Gallagher's office. Did I see your hand up? I thought I did. Miranda Augustine. Going once. There you I'm are. I'm so sorry. I was having trouble unmuting. Um, All good. Uh, yeah, Webex thanks is a so monster. Much. So. Um, go ahead. Thanks so go much. Uh, I'll, I have a less formal statement, but um, I'll just share. Uh, um, yeah, we, again, like everyone has said, want to thank DOT um, for working with community stakeholders um, addressing, you know, particular small business needs. Um, super grateful to, to all the volunteers, the HORT. Um, uh, but yeah, our, our main point, our main takeaway is, uh, like most have said, just um, 
also want to stress that we're super excited to get this started as quickly as possible. Um, really excited to finally do the work that's been talked about for for a long time um, to make these, you know, permanent changes that meet the needs, create a safe, sustainable, multimodal street. Um, so, right, expressing support, expressing um, urgency. Got thanks it. so much. Great, thanks so much. Short and sweet, I like it. Um, okay, so, um, I think, okay, if you've spoken, please take your hands down. And, William will tag team on this to try to get in as many voices as possible. But what I need to do first is people that actually signed up to speak um, through the the city platform. I'm going to call on them now. Uh, Amanda Cologne is Amanda Cologne in the room. Amanda Cologne going once, going twice. No response. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Susanna, forgive me. Accuse, A K U Z U. Sorry, A K Y U Z. Accuse, Susanna. Susanna. Accuse. Going once. Hey, Eric. Just. Quick, sorry to interrupt. Um, I think yeah. that there are like one or two more electeds that are on the call. Can we recognize them first? If that's okay, I think. Um, um council member, uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm just uh, like a negative thumbs down. Um, I think council member wrestler's office is on, and I'm trying to see who she else. was on, but she dropped out, so I don't see her anymore. I do see Anya, I do see is Vanessa. On the call. I don't know if she's like tuned in at this very second, but I do see Vanessa Nutter on. Yeah, Eric, it's Anya from Councilmember Gutierrez's office. Okay, do me a favor. Uh, um, let me just let me just run through these signed up speakers because there's only four, and um, I'm not seeing them in the chat, so or in the or in the attendance. So let me just get through these, and I'll come back to you if that's okay. Thank you. Okay. Oh, I'm. Um, yeah, we have we have no comment. I'm fine. I'm just here to listen. Oh, Thanks. Okay. Great. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. And uh, I'm sorry. That was Vanessa. And then Anya, do you have a statement? Oh no, that was me saying that, Eric. I oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm all confused here. I was I'm, say I'm, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The iPad is not I'm the best for WebEx. I'm also just here to listen tonight. Great. Love it. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you both for showing up and and uh, reporting back to the. Uh, uh, to the representatives um, and Kevin, thank you for uh, for that clarification. Appreciate that. Okay, back to our lovely list of signed up speakers. Morton Marot, I think I'm saying that Marot, M-A-R-O-T-T. -T. Morton, yeah, I'm I'm more in a listening mode, so you can move on. Uh, okay, so you're no comment then. Correct. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, and then the last is Ms. Trish Browning. Trish Browning? Yes, hi, how are you? Um, hi, okay, great, go ahead, please. You. Um, I appreciate you um, sharing the plans with us, and I, I do think that we're moving in a positive direction, although I do wanna say that as a homeowner on Berry Street, um, <laughs> and any resident in general, um, we have not been consulted. It sounds like many of the merchants and the school have been given priority, but um, for example, when the school was given access to close Barry completely um, during school hours, we live directly across the street and we were never con contacted. Um, we do have a driveway also, so we are basically blocked off during the day. Um, we've been able to make this work but um, it does really affect us as, as well as some of these other decisions being made. For example, a cab will not drive um, to our house or, you know, I've heard many residents say this, they will not drop off or pick up. So for example, I've got surgery next week, so I will have to be dropped off down the corner. Um, so many of these things are actually not being discussed with a resident. So I appreciate people wanting to utilize the space um, as a fun and safe um, pedestrian and bike passageway, but um, I think it's really important to actually um, communicate with the residents who live here. Thank you very much. 
Okay, right on time. Thank you, Ms. Browning. Okay, and since that was our first public comment. You could I, this is Morton, could I actually say something? Yes. Okay. You have one um, minute. One, yeah, please go. That's fine. I don't need that. But actually, I would I would second what was just said now here. Um, I also own one one of the residents on on Barry Street, and I also I granted I have had it rented out during COVID here, but I this is the first I'm hearing of this, uh, and I'm kind of wondering what process there has been to put this in some kind of. I'm assuming this is a formal hearing to some extent, but at least what process has this been through to actually get in touch with the legal owners of the residences aside from just the the merchants, I guess. I'll just jump uh, in there. So as uh, you can see, yeah, we do not distinguish between property owners or renters. Um, we talk to all types of people about um, how best to plan our streets. Um, as I highlighted in the presentation, DOT has done quite a lot of outreach um, to residents, businesses, institutions, and other tick, types of oh, stakeholders. But, but how has the outreach been done? Because I have not received anything. Well, I'm sorry that you haven't received anything, but you know, it's been brought up at this particular committee probably 15 times. We've held a number of on-street workshops. There's been signs. But, but if I don't know anything's going on, I'm not gonna, I mean, I didn't even know we do existed as a committee, but the, the prior speaker has the same experience as I have. Okay. Mr. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Morton. Um, I, I understand your frustration, uh, but there, there has been much discussion, <laughs> much, much discussion about that. And if, if you're there, you see the open street. So no, uh, I'm, but not, I'm not, not I'm, contesting I, the situation. I'm just simply asking the question from a legal perspective. What has in fact legally been done? to contact the people who are involved here or who are being affected. I'm not talking about whether there's been a lot of discussion, because if you have never been contacted, you don't even know this discussion has been going on. And I don't have any, so, I'm, not, I'm not opposed to the plans or anything. I'm just asking that formal question. What has in right. fact been done? So I know okay. where to look next time. Okay, so Kyle has, has made his statement. You have that statement for the record. Uh, in, in future, and this is true of, of any community, not just you, Mr. Morrow, but any other community member. But, you know, if you see a, a DOT project happening, there is a website for DOT that you can reach out and get information. DOT has never, this has been a constant thorn in the community board side with notification. Um, a lot of times the, the board has to go out and do notification, particularly with businesses or you know, this we went through this with the North Henry reversal. Um, we've gone through this with, and for those for those longtime warriors that remember the North Henry conversation, and other issues where you know it's it's this constant, um, constant you know pull and push with DOT. On some occasions, DOT has uh, at our request gone out and done flyering or or contacting, and so I don't want to say like DOT never does it, but. Um, you know, it's it's a huge agency. It's it's a huge uh, community. We're always trying to get the the, the public informed as best we can. Um, but um, that, that's that's the best I can say. And I really need to move on because we are losing time. So, um, Mr. Vega, um, I am going to start this off with Benjamin. He was there. I'm not. Yeah. Okay. So I'm not going by who raised their hand first. I can't deal with that. So just public bear with me. I can't. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven speakers on my screen. So, and I'm going to call your names. So be ready when I call on you and then we'll, we'll go from there. Okay. So I have Benjamin. I have Brent. I have Dan Elstein. I have Elliot Travel. I have Jeff Hodson. I have Carrie. And I have Kevin Lachera. And so we'll start with those six and we will go from there. So, um, and uh, sorry, just bear with me one second. So I'm, I am, for the record, I will be, uh, hold on one second. I will be, Uh, I'll need your full names for the record, but uh, if your name is in the in the panel, then I don't 
need you to say it, but if your only a part name or nickname is in there, I need your full name for the record. Um, and um, for those of you that actually read my report, once it gets posted on the CB1 website, um, I, uh, in this case, I'm gonna be just um, listing your name and uh, general, uh, under general points of support and uh, rather than a, a full, um, a full statement. So just so folks are aware that I am paying attention, but can't fit it all in. Anyway, with that said, Benjamin Lample, you are recognized. Okay. All right. Um, thank you, Dee and Kyle, for the presentation. Um, huge fan of a, lot of, of a lot of what you showed us there. I had one question around the um, uh, traffic lights in general. I was wondering if there's going to be any update to signals, uh, especially for pedestrian prioritization and what those signals are prioritizing right now and how they can be used to help uh, calm car traffic and prioritize bikes and pedestrians. Uh, okay, so that's actually a question, which I love. Um, and Kyle or Dee, do you want a quick answer to that? Yeah, so <clears throat> um, the exact timing for the grand uh, signal hasn't been finished because um, our signal staff is working on their contract with their contractor for the installation. Um, but the signals at Metropolitan, uh, there aren't really any conflicts, neither at Broadway um, in terms of turns or anything to, to just really isn't a lot of like technical uh, tools for those two. Um, and at Grand would be the one because it actually has turns into the intersection. Um, that's really the place where we'll make sure uh, when that proposal gets done to make sure that there's pedestrian priority in the phasing. Okay, great. So thank you very much. Brent Bovenzi. Hey there. Yeah, thanks so much for all of this. And I hope we get it done as quickly as possible early summer as a phase one. And then we that you continue to take uh, everybody's inputs here for other things they like to see and quickly iterate on those for a phase 1.5, maybe by the fall or in the spring. Uh, and I'd love to see just quick iteration so we can address issues as soon as they come up. Thank you. Great. 28 seconds. I love it. Okay. If you've spoken, please take your hand down. El uh, Brent. Um, going to Dan Elstein. You are up. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. All right. So, first, I want to thank CB1 for hosting and Kyle and D for your presentation. And just a few points I want to touch on. I want to say that I appreciate the sentiment that Barry is one of the few places in the city where uh, bikers are able to ride side by side, which I think is an often uh, overlooked aspect of streets like these. So, I want to thank you for that, as well as thank you for the thought that went into the specific points of direction reversals and taking elevation to account. I want to say again, thank you for that. And I would like to add that I second a lot of my peers uh, asks for mid block interventions all along the corridor. I think those are supremely important for making the making Barry a place instead of just like a thoroughfare. And that's all the time. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Please take your hand down, Dan. I'm so happy you're all doing it under a minute. I love you. Okay, Elliot Drabble, returning champion. Go at, go for it. Wow, I'm I'm so flattered. <laughs> uh, all right, well, thank you for the time. Um, I've been volunteering with the Open Street and uh, attending meetings like this and uh, workshops since uh, 2020, and I'm really excited to see uh, the changes that are coming this year, uh, especially the direction reversals and the question about the. Uh, the light on Grand Street, especially uh, very excited about that one. And um, yeah, the direct reversals to prevent cutting through. And um, I'd love to see you know, more of the uh, mid block treatments to try to slow down the drivers who do come through and, you know, just anything to make it more inviting for the pedestrians and bikers to enjoy. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, Jeff Hodson. Hey everyone, um, I'm Jeff, legal resident of Barry Street here. Although I have to say I am a renter, I haven't made my millions yet, but thank you Kyle for saying <laughs> renter voices matter too. 
my dog's unemployed, so I'm trying to get her a job. But um, I live on North 8th, between uh, North 8th and North 7th, um, and I'm obsessed. It's the best thing ever. Um, I grew up in California where I would go to parking lot to parking yeah. lot, but now I wake up, grab my newspaper, walk down the street with my dog to the local coffee shop, uh, homecoming, and it's great. Um, and I live on a local business hotspot with Lucy's, Antikapesta, Jordan Jacks, Teddy's, and all of them. They all love it. I'm obsessed. Um, I know we're making progress. Um, saw someone did the green circles on the ground. I think that was a great addition. Um, it's working really well, and I'm excited to see things come together ASAP. Thank you. Okay. Great. Thank you, Jeff. Carrie, you are next. Carrie, can I get your last name for the record, please? Yes. Um, it's Whitkin, W I T K I N. Um, okay, please go ahead. I'll be quick. Um, I'm really excited about this proposal and um, the prospect of it being implemented well before the end of this year. Um, I want to support mid block hugs and street furniture. I'm really interested in that comment about reinforcing the loading zones with paint. Um, I'd love to see those be successfully implemented on Barry because um, it's a feature I think is so necessary throughout our neighborhoods um, with the volume of deliveries being made and all of the double parking and just lack of accommodation for um, trucks making deliveries. I also support um, making the bike lane a continuous painted green lane um, and Banker's Anchor looks fantastic. It's truly exciting to see that plaza come into place 24-7. Um, that's it. Thank you. Great. Thanks so much. Um, okay. So, uh, okay. So now I have, William, I'm going to put you on hold for a minute. I have... Kevin, then Lydia Korchow, and then Ryan Conan. So, Kevin, please go. Sure. Thank you, Eric. Um, thank you, Dean Kyle, and thank you, everybody. Um, you know, I, I just want to take a moment uh, to just, you know, I think this has been such a collective community effort from the very beginning, and that has been reflected in the support that we see here tonight. Um, you know, what we're seeing on Barry is great, and it's also long overdue. Um, it is a phase one of things that the community wants to see, um, you know, and it is part of a long process um, that this community has fought for. And we've had losses, you know, we've lost Riggs and Russell and West. Um, but this, what we are getting on Barry and what we're getting on Bankers Anchor is sorely needed in this community. Um, we've, had, we've seen a 71% reduction in injuries on Barry from crashes. We've seen the activation of tens of thousands of square feet of open space. Um, and we've seen the community come together to advocate for it and 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 build something together um, as neighbors. And, and that is a really, really powerful thing and an important thing. Um, you know, I only want to see it expanded in all the ways that DOT is able to. Um, I want to see the mid-block activations so that more pedestrian space is set down in on this street. Um, I want to see an extension of time to 7 a.m. Um, really, I, it ought to be 24 hours. Um, but, um, this is a great start. Uh, please, you know, please, please, please do it with all speed. Um, our elected officials were depending on you, um, to lead and to speak in favor of this at every opportunity you have, um, and to support these amazing community members, um, and these amazing, um, you know, you know, agency partners. Thank you, Kevin. Um, thank you, Kevin. Work. Thank, thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Eric. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. Okay, great. Um, <clears throat> Lydia Corchow. Yes, hello. Uh, hi. Hi. Yeah, what, what I would like to know, these mid-block interventions, I don't know what you're talking about. Will it slow down first responders? And also, the, the, the furniture that you're proposing, will it take away the uh, parking spaces for residents? The planters, benches that you're talking about, would it take away parking space? And the, uh, you... and the outreach wasn't too good on March 7th because a lot of my Spanish neighbors did not know about it. And I only got one notice on all of South 2nd Street. So your outreach was very poor on March 7th for the Spanish speaking community. Okay, thank you, Ms. Corchow. Quick response, DOT. 
Yes. Um, it seemed like that was more directed towards public comments that have referenced mid block treatments, but uh, I'll address there's an opportunity for this is one of the just largest. To, just to explain, just to explain what mid block treatments are, and just yeah, because we really didn't get into it. Um, at one point, we were uh, talking about taking additional space along the curb and marking it out like we're doing at the intersection at various spaces mid block to allow a little bit more permeability between the sidewalk and the street. So you don't have the like wall of cars effect where once somebody sort of has decided they want to be on the sidewalk or the street, it's very hard to get back. You have to, you could potentially be like squeezing in between parked cars. Um, this is one of the larger, um, I think somebody hit whiteboard. Uh, this is one of the larger SIPs we're doing this year and one of the larger SIPs for DOT period. This is a very large uh, and significant project. And, you know, there's an opportunity to consider that in the uh, in the future, um, but it's outside okay. of the scope and capacity of this okay. project this year. So not, not happening. So thank you. I still don't know what mid block intervention is. How is it okay. going that, to work? Again, it's, 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 not, it's not happening. Yeah, right. it's very similar to what's at the intersection, but just at various points along. Uh, Will it be an obstacle to the first responders? Yes it's not. No. It's not happening. We need to move on, Ms. Corcho. I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, okay, Ryan Conan. You spoke about it endlessly. The, it the, 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 the agency did not present it in their plan. Therefore, it is not op really open for discussion. It's a wish. It's a wish list from the public, and that's well, all. You should so, think, you. think of safety. Please. Thank you, Ms. Corcho. Thank you, Ms. Corchow. <laughs> Ryan, Corn Ryan Cornyn. Um, I hey, my name is Ryan Cunin. I'm a resident at Metropolitan and Barry, and I would like to thank DOD for um a very thoughtful plan. Um, particularly Metropolitan and Barry. Um, that hill, the change of direction is epic. Barry Street since it it started. Barry Open Street, the crashes there have stopped, and um, I'm glad to see that um, we're thinking further about how to keep pedestrians safe. I would like to see more, 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 um, and I want to see it 24 hours. And I just would like to ask that um, the milling schedule be sort of like maybe uh, really kept on top of because there can be times when it takes forever. I know it's weather dependent, but so many people depend on very open street. It's so popular. There's so many like the dog walkers united. Like it's just really um, important, but thank you. And um, more benches, more planters, more bid block stuff. Thanks. Thank you, Ryan. Okay. Um, yeah, and uh, Brian, uh, thank you for that milling um, uh, comment because as some of you will know, and I pay special attention to because I have to, um, sometimes, you know, the, the they tear up the the um, the old road bed and then they they wait a long time to put down the new one for whatever reason. Um, and I know it's a, a scheduling thing at DOT and it's always a challenge to get that uh, that repaving done quickly. But in this case, it really can't just stay open for like a week and a half and then we get back to like paving it, whatever. So I will encourage DOT to uh, make all haste when that repaving happens, especially given the time of year that it's going to be happening. Um, it's kind of like prime prime time for uh, open street use. Um, okay, I can, okay, so I can do, all right, William, stay on, stay on tap, but I'm going to do Nathan Pastor, Wendy Carlock, Paul Benson, Yafim Yedrenikov, Slovak, and then David uh, Ruperti. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. Uh, so, what did I just say? <laughs> sorry. Uh, now I lost it. Now I lost it. Um, and I think you mentioned me first. Who who is the yes Nathan? There you are. <laughs> just, you, you disappeared on me. Okay, Nathan, go right ahead. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, my name is Nathan. And, and just 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 so um just so we're clear, I'm obviously breaking my own rule, and we've gone over. Um, but I the last uh the last people that I just called you were the last speakers. So if I didn't call your name, take your hands down, and um, and we're gonna we have to move on, uh, because we have to talk about Meeker and apply. Okay, Nathan, please go. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for letting me speak. Thanks to DOT for this presentation. Um, 
yeah, it's great to see the progress on, on the plans. I'm excited to see it implemented. Uh, just two things I'd like to say um, is that I'm sure with all with less car traffic, you know, emergency vehicles will be able to service the street much more efficiently than they are now or on other streets that have lots of car traffic. So no concerns at all about that for me. Um, and I also, you know, have an unsolicited suggestion for DOT. I don't know if though, I really like seeing those, um, the, the visualization of where the traffic is on the street um, that you showed at the beginning of your presentation. I don't know if you had that data earlier in the process. I think it would have really helped to see that earlier because there were discussions in these types of meetings where people were claiming that nobody walks in the street. And um, so it could have really <laughs> guided the conversation. Um, and if that kind of information is available earlier, it'd be great to share it. Um, so excited to see this implemented. Um, thanks for the time. Thank you very much, Nathan. Um, okay, I've, I've lo I remember who I called. So when I see you all, Slovak E. I hope I'm saying that right. Yeah, but I'm Solve, probably going S O L V E I G N T W I S T L E. N T W I S T L E. Um, I'd like to formally invite everyone to the Barry Open Street Earth Day event that we're partnering with DOT. We are bringing in some nonprofits. Um, it's going to be a really great day, April 22nd, Saturday. All are welcome. Thank you. All right. Thanks so much. Um, please take your hand down. And I had Wendy Carlock. Hi. Um, I use the Berry Street every day on my bike, and <laughs> I'm hoping for more 24 hour access as I found myself going down the street. The wrong way the other day when it was closed and totally forgot it was not open at that time and i think other people could benefit from that as well for safety reasons um i'm hoping that perhaps some kind of place making could occur near shake shack where all the motor scooters are for their pleasure as well as everybody else's um just to kind of contain that um group of people and give a space for them um and I just really enjoyed this presentation today. I think a lot of improvements are really necessary. What I've seen was great and um, I hope it happens as soon as possible because of all the delays and there were so many people out last weekend on the street enjoying it and for everybody's safety and the warm weather coming and post COVID. I just think we need to get this rolling right away. Thank you. Thank you, Wendy. Uh, Yassine. Sorry, let me reset my timer. Yassine, please go. Hey, I'm Ethan Vidernikov. Uh, name's in the in, in there. I got you. I got you. Go ahead, bro. Cool. I'm a resident of CB1, and I go to PT, physical therapy, on 7th and White, so I cross Barry nearly every week. My gym is Vital Gym, and I love that new crosswalk that we're putting in there. Thank you so much. I love the idea of adding a stop sign there on 14th and Barry. Amazing. Let's extend the open street. Thank you so much for the paint in the middle of the intersections. I think that's going to look so good. Uh, really excited for that. Uh, let's take back the street. Streets are for the people. And uh, I see my time. Thank you. Great. Thanks so much. Uh, David Ruperti. Hi, everyone. This is David. Um, very excited about what I've seen tonight. Um, I've been volunteering on the Bankers Anchor team uh, for the past year, and we're super excited to see it actually become a real plaza. It's very exciting. So I'm very supportive of all of that. Um, I, I, I want to echo what everyone's been saying about uh, make, implementing all of these plans sooner, as soon as possible. And I uh, want to echo what people have said about uh, potential future mid block interventions. Um, and that's it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, okay. So the last two will be Hunter Williams and then Vero. So Hunter Williams. Hey there. Uh, thanks, everyone. Um, this was great. This is actually my first time really getting into this. I've been at uh, on Berry Street between uh, Metropolitan and, and North Third for about 17 years. So I think this could be really great for our community and specifically my block, which was in your presentation probably about four times um, right in front of my apartment. I did have a really specific question about the parking rules between North Fourth and North Fifth, which currently there's there's basically no parking allowed at all. Um, I don't know why it seems pretty antiquated. I think it was mostly for uh, <clears throat> commercial deliveries. I'm wondering if you guys have looked at that at all, just to sort of make up for the lost uh, 
parking that we're probably going to going to see with these with 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 the um, implementation of this plan. Uh, okay, quick response from DOT. Um, I think the section that you're referring to, you're saying specifically the east curb. Uh, yes. A lot of that has to do with like legacy curb cuts and stuff. We can definitely take a look again um, and just flag if any of that needs to be revisited. Um, yeah, I mean, even prior to these plans, it's really never made sense. It was just there's never been parking allowed there and it's just a chain link fence with you know the side of two people's backyards so anyway thank you very much i appreciate it yeah thank you hunter and uh vero i need your full name for the record please how you doing yes i'm using my wife's uh, account so my full name is carrick vasquez uh spell carrick for me k-e-r-o-k -K. carrick vasquez as v-a-z-q-u-e-z -E got you okay Okay, please go ahead. You have yeah, one so, minute. Um, I've been listening as everything's been going on, and I'm not, I'm not fully opposed to nothing that's going on to the open street. I actually live right on 119 Grand Street, which is right off of um, Barry, which is right across the street. My daughter goes to 84, PS 84, and the open concept is cool because I know the park is not being utilized at the moment. But at the same time, me who actually drives to work, you know, when I come home from work, I actually utilize Barry most of the time when I get home because that's most of the time where I can find it. I'm just a little concerned for somebody like me and my wife who also drives, like that I'm not being pushed out completely. And I live literally right across the street from the school. I've lived there all my life. I own my apartment there. And I just want to like, just that's my only concern. Everything else I really have no issue with just as long as we're not completely pushed out for cyclists and all the tourists that come around because we do have Barry Park, um, Domino Park. We do have McCarran Park, you know, that I feel like a lot of times are not being utilized, you know, and I think that should be utilized a little bit more than the open space. But I'm just, my concern is more parking for me, you know, and the residents that are in the area. But everything else, I'm cool with okay. it. All right. Thank you, Mr. Vasquez. Right, uh, and that's, I think that's a good place to end. Yeah. I want to thank, I yeah. want to thank Kyle. You might have missed me. Sorry. Apologies for interrupting. You said my name. Who is that? Paul Benson. Oh, Paul. Yes, you're right. I, I apologize. Okay, Paul, you are the last speaker. Okay, thank you. Only because I did say it. <laughs> so yes. go ahead, please. All right. Yeah, okay. All right. I mean, thank you so much to DOT for all the work you're doing. I really appreciate how much time you've devoted to listening to the community and honestly creating a plan that'll work for us. I really appreciate it. Um, Barry, I live on the south side near Barry and South Six. I support Barry Open Street. I support this plan. It's just such a wonderful amenity to our community. And after, you know, living in Williamsburg for so long, um, 15 years, I, you know, because of Barry Open Street, I'm more connected than ever to other people in my neighborhood. And I just can't underestimate how wonderfully rewarding that's been. So I urge the implementation as soon as possible. And I would love to see paint through all the intersections, which was in a previous plan. Uh, thank you so much. Thanks everyone. Great. Okay. Thank you so much, Paul. And with that, we are, we are closed. So thank you to Kyle. Thank you to D. Um, Eric. And, uh, yes. Sorry. One quick question. I, I know that that it wasn't on the agenda to really have a vote, but given the amount of like, no, no, that we've gone. I really no, feel like no, no, Aaron, no. So many people have shown their <laughs> no, voice to support. Why can't no, we? No, this is no, yeah. Kevin. This is a this is a done deal. It doesn't need our support. We have to move on. So thank you. I appreciate that sentiment, but no. Uh, okay. So next is uh, so again. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you, D. Uh, thank you so much, of, everyone. Lot, lot of work. A lot of hours spent. Um, I, I I say this reservedly that I hope this is the last time we see. <laughs> but only on Barry. Only on Barry. Only on Barry. That, Barry. The feeling <laughs> might be mutual, but we'll definitely be back. We really enjoy coming to see right you. Right on. No, 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 really. Uh, thanks. Thanks to both of you. All right, cool. So, okay, now to our next fun item um, will be Meeker Avenue. And I initially had Craig Bearwald um, presenting, but I think Zach Wyde is going to come in and and do the presentation. Am I correct in that? Uh, yes, and I have a, a couple hour long presentation for everyone to 
I'm kidding. I, I don't even have a presentation, so I'm just going to talk. So Really? Really? Yeah. That's that's actually disappointing um, yeah. because I was hope because I was hoping Zach to see little little bike lanes coming off the bridge that connect to the rest of the network, which is what we've been worried about. And now that we're not seeing it, I'm kind of disappointed. Um, and I'm being a little coy, but I really am not happy. Uh, however, you have what you have, and uh, uh, I guess we'll have to have you back in a in a month or two to see some. Uh, some bike connections, but I, but uh, when I, when I spoke to, um, to Rhonda and, and with Craig, uh, we, we just wanted to, um, the, the, the meat of it was to see where you ended last year and what needs to be done and where you're, where you're starting and when this year. So let's, uh, let's go with that. Okay. So last year we didn't, do any extra painting um but we did get started on a lot of the signals and we continued the concrete work so uh, and can, when, when, when you talk about these things can you talk about like from block to block and just kind of so we're understanding where you're talking about uh yeah would it be a little too weird to just pull up google maps or that's i don't know maybe i shouldn't do that uh Okay, so I'll start from, I guess I'll give a whole history of the project. Okay, the... You don't have to give a whole history of the project. We we know the history of the project. Well, I mean, like, in terms of the right. implementation, stick the, that seems okay. like what you're uh, asking. Okay, okay so right. the markings between um, kind of Kingsland slash uh, uh, Sutton Street, uh, like at the very end of the parking bays, those markings were marked all the way to Graham um, in 2021 at this point, but we didn't have any signalization to allow people to cross in between the parking bays, which is a big part of the project. And I, to be honest, I'm just as a bit annoyed at how slow everything's going as everyone here as someone who has to walk by the site all the time. But um so there there was a lot of issues with the signals contracting and that was so that we could add pedestrian signals add bike signals stop turn so that you can have a safe time to cross um and that has taken a long time the only thing that we got in last year was north henry street which that is if you go to north henry street at meeker avenue that is what the rest of the street is supposed to look like um, with some variations, but that's like very generally what it should look like. All the lights are going. You have a very specific time to cross. The markings are correct there. Um, so that's the marking side and the signals part. Well, I, I, and then right now, the signal at Apollo has changed already, and the ones at Morgan are close to being ready to go like that that there's other work that we have to do to convert that to a one-way street um i'm sorry and, say that again say that last part again i heard apollo say the other part again okay uh so the apollo signal has been finished the the work that right. needs to go there because there's a part that's coming off the ramp from the bqe yeah and a part yeah. that's mm -hmm. on meeker and we had to set those on separate timings um right. The signal at Morgan has it, the signal at Morgan has had work on it. So you'll see these like you'll see bags on the signal, um, yeah. like black bags. So there's work there, but we need to do a little bit more concrete work and then we'll be able to open up the pathway to the bridge, which is I think what you're getting to that. The the bigger and then okay, if I keep going down signals, uh I guess okay, Kingsland should happen this year. Um, actually, Kingsland's operating already. It said that we have to put the markings in, which should happen fairly soon, spring, summer, depending on. We want to kind of just paint everything at once rather than show up a million times at the site. But um, if you go to Kingsland and Meeker, you'll see that there's a bike light to cross, and it's operating already. So that one was installed. Monitor is supposed to be signalized, but that uh, admittedly will probably take... Uh, 
I think saying this year is probably very hopeful. So I, I don't know about that timeline. There's, there's a lot of issues with installing new signals, but that is planned to get a new signal at monitor street. Um, and then at North Henry, like I said, the changes have happened already. And that's exactly what most of the rest of the intersection should look like. At McGinnis Boulevard, the work has started. You also see bags there. Um, and we expect to finish that one this year too. Um, and then getting to Graham and farther south, we can't, uh, we can't say that the signals will be done this year, but we plan to finish all the rest next year. But that's to kind of generalize everything. Between the bridge and Graham Avenue is the plan. We'll have a fully operating path by the end of the year. That's the goal. And probably by the middle of the summer, by the way everything's lined up. All the concrete work's done. It's just a little bit extra. Well, actually, the only concrete work we have to do is at Morgan Avenue, but after that, it should be pretty simple. Concrete work only takes a couple weeks at a time for each intersection. Um, but then for the rest of the year, we'll be working between, um, we already did Manhattan Avenue last year, but we'll be doing concrete work on Leonard, Lorimer, Union, and Metropolitan. Um, and we'll also be painting within the bays, kind of like what we did in 2021. So it'll start to look like it's operating, but we're still going to have some lag with the signals being installed. So the crossings won't be there, but in terms of the path being there, uh, in between the blocks, we are planning to have all that done by the end of the year. Uh, so that was a lot of information. I'm not sure how well anyone followed. I see hands popping up, but, uh, yeah, well, I mean, okay, so I've been asking Rhonda for this presentation for four months now. It's been back and forth. I, I'm really at a loss as to why you and Craig or Ted are not here with a PowerPoint or something to say, oh, remember when you asked about this? Here's the connection to the bike lane onto the bridge. Oh, and here's the thing. I mean, like, a, or a punch list or something. I mean, you're, you're doing this thing and I'm doing my best to like list what you're telling me, but this is not what DOT is supposed to do. You were supposed to come to us with a presentation as I asked for four months in advance and it got delayed and then it was gonna happen. So it's not like you didn't have time to do it. It's like you didn't wanna do it. And now you're here and you're listing these things and I'm happy that this work is happening, but it's hard for me to understand. And it's clearly hard for the public to understand. And I'm just, I'm really upset. <laughs> I'm really upset because, you know, it's not like I asked for this yesterday and like, we just threw you on the agenda. It's been a while and you've been working on this for a while. You know, I've got people telling me constantly about what is going on with Meeker. And, and now, you know, a lot of them are here actually. So they've, they've heard it for themselves now, but, you know, not, not a great look. I'm just, you know, I, I don't even know what questions to ask, except, um, I, to respond, yeah. we can write up something to say the current why, status, why but to be writing, honest, why are is... you writing up something now when and there, it's not like there's not old present old, you know, PowerPoint presentations that can't be tweaked. Like, I mean, it's not like you're reinventing the whole thing. You're just updating old PowerPoint presentation. It's, 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 I'm sorry. I'm, the, I'm sorry. The PowerPoint presentation shows what the plan is and there's nothing that's changed from that. In terms of implementing it, things change very quickly, to be honest. Like, uh, the signal work has been lagging so much that it's been hard to give updates and all of a sudden it's starting to come online. So, uh, yeah, it, I'm. I, I understand the frustration. It's it's annoying. It's annoying to us having to track everything and watching it go so slowly too. So, well, uh, you know, I'm I'm not happy. So uh, with that, I'll give it over to uh, the committee. Um, William Vega. Sorry, William. Yeah, I, I just got upset, so I muted myself. Uh, this is not acceptable. I mean, this is, you know, 
we have tried uh, to be uh, supportive of DOT to get our streets and, and, and sidewalks safe and to get nothing, no information, no update. It's, it's, it's not disappointing. Uh, it's, it's disrespectful. And we represent our community. So we respect North Brooklyn. So you're disrespecting all of North Brooklyn. I give up my time to other board members. Thank you. Thanks, William. Um, I don't see. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, so we'll do. I'm just going from what I can see. So I'm going to do Bronwyn, Kevin, Paul, uh, and then I don't see any other committee members with hands raised. So we'll we'll start there and we'll go from there. So Bronwyn, please go ahead. Zach, what's the cause of the delay? Of everything, like all, the completion. Of <laughs> I don't. Good luck with that question, Bronwyn. Explain that. <laughs> Um, the main cause of the delay is that it's taking a long time to install the changes in signal work that the, the concrete work also is significant because every time that we work on one of these corners or one of these crossings, we end up changing the entire, both sides of the parking bay. And because of, um, ADA laws, we're supposed to upgrade all the ramps on all the adjacent corners. Um, so that's why all of these intersections take a while. But that but the, was all the slowest of... thing is is the signals, and that that is very clear by that. There's only one signal operating right now. And what's the delay on the signals? Um, there was a point last year where there's I it's a capacity issue. I to be honest, it's not my unit that signals, but from I do there's, remember there's a lot of things that, breaking, that, and it's kind remember. of the same been, contractors yeah. that are building this yes. that are the same contractors that are fixing things. So it, it's just very slow. And uh, I do remember Kyle saying that there were contractor problems. It was a problem I mean, with the uh, contract for installation of signals, and I believe that's compounded by the fact that there's been a backlog that built up because of the pandemic and the slowdown of the original, you know, work in the beginning of the shutdown. It's, I mean, it's unfortunate I, and it's not anybody here's fault. I don't think it's anybody at DOT's fault that um, this work has gotten slowed up. It's out of our hands. It's not a lack of passion for the job. Yeah, uh, of course. And Eric, thank you for your impassioned response. I, of course, echo your disappointment and frustration and I agree with William that it's it is disrespectful and Zach of course you know this is we understand this is not you but this is our forum to express Rhonda our frustration and disappointment and needs of the community and it's not just that it's frustration and that it's disappointing to not meet deadlines like it's dangerous as it is now it was dangerous before and it's more dangerous now because it's unclear where people are supposed to be when I mean I try and ride my bike I try and cross and it's 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 really quite unsafe. There have been, um, I don't know, I'm sure Kevin's gonna pull out numbers. I know that there have been multiple injuries and I think a death along Meeker um, in the last year. And, you know, I mean, it's just, I understand that there are signal and constraints. I'm in the industry of construction, I get it. Um, but I, projects are happening elsewhere and we need to prioritize um, this incredibly dangerous corridor in our neighborhood. Um, I also just wanna do as I always do when we're talking about Meeker, put my plug in for the extension of signal time crossing at the intersection of McGinnis or Humboldt, I guess it is at that point, um, and Meeker where I understand from previous DOT presentations, the signal timing is not going to be extended I'm talking about DAC crossing northbound um, from Humboldt under across Meeker to what where it becomes McGinnis. Um, there is not enough time to cross at that intersection. You can't get through at one crossing, even with your if you're running, um, and especially not you know with kids or carrying groceries or anything else. So I've asked for this before. I know it's a very specific demand. But if you can please reconsider the signal timing at the intersection of Humboldt and Meeker in the work, um, I think that is a much needed improvement to make a safe and viable crossing at that intersection. Thank you. Thank you, Bronwyn. Um, Kevin Costa. 
I, um, Bronwyn, um, I remember a while back you filmed it while crossing the street. I think that everyone at everyone on this meeting and at DOT should see that clip because you're walking with your kids and like in real time, we can see like, there's just not enough time to cross. So to your point, like, absolutely. Like that, something needs to be done, but I also think that everyone should see that, um, that video. I that think is. I sent it to the board. I don't remember, but Zach, if you cross there, just, you said you cross here, just go to Humboldt and cross North and you'll see what I'm talking about right by the liquor store to the gas station. Yes, that it that sounds right from my own personal experience too. The uh, I don't I don't have the timing in front of me, but part of changing this crossing will change the timing. But if someone else said before that 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 crossing wasn't changing, I can't say it is. But the timing will change a little bit. So I well yeah, I'll have to look at it. I don't have it on the top of my head. Um, so, Kevin, I wanted to also echo, you know, everyone's sentiment of frustration, disappointment. You know, I totally concur with Bronwyn that it's dangerous, totally unsafe. I mean, thank goodness, like, even the, like, crosswalk, um, you know, cement work was done because a lot of, for a while, it was just, you know, a hole in the ground. Like, if you were using the bike lane, like, I'm surprised that more people haven't sued the city because of that. Um, and and Zach, I, I understand, Zach, Rhonda, I understand that, like, there might be delays, but I think that everyone in this community, like, un deserves to know, like, why beyond just, like, there are contract delays. And it's been a while since the pandemic slowdowns, and I, I think that all of us can understand that we're still living through the, the backlogs to a certain extent, but I really think that we need further clarity. So, Zach, I would love if you could send us a write-up of, like, what's going on? Is there no one home at DOT? Like, is it staffing issues? Is there a CP not getting through at OMB? Like, what, what's actually going on? And if the contractors can't step up, why is it that the signalization cannot be done in-house? Or why can, like, DDC not step in? Like, what kind of special equipment is needed for these, like, you know, complex signal installations? But, like, we need to know and we deserve to know as a community and like like we're i'm more confused than anything and you know at this point we're we're moving on to other projects like with the bqe with like other other bigger bolder projects and we're wondering like hey we can't even get a bike lane under meeker ab like we can't even get signalization done What's going to like instill faith in this community that DOT isn't just going to deliver or, or uh, talk out of its, you know, its butt essentially and like not actually deliver on anything, you know, okay. the, the definition of false promises. And, and like, we get it, like there are delays, like Bronwyn was saying very articulately, like she works in construction, she understands that there are delays, but like we, we deserve to know why. Like, what's going on? Is it an OMB issue? Okay. Like, why can't I it be brought to I think you stated the question, and, and I think it's going to be, if Eric wants us to provide a write-up like that, he, he yes. can send that email to me. That's fine. But I think we understand the question. So yeah. it, it, there's no value in saying it on a loop. All right. Thank you. And please, we just want safety. Safety and execution. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, Paul Keltermore. I'll take my hand down, Eric, because I was just going to pile on with my disappointment okay. and frustration as okay. well. I think the points okay. made. Got it. All right, fine. So thank you. Um, and, and Zach, this isn't personal. It's just business, you know, but, you know, and you've done presentations for us before that have been fantastic. So yeah, I, I know you're a little on the spot here, so it's. I just want you to understand it's not personal. DOT is doing tons and tons of good work in North Brooklyn. There are better bike lanes under whatever with the parking and all that other night, nightmare stuff and whatever. I mean, there are improvements, but, you know, it's just, it's the presentation that I'm really having the biggest issue. I mean, I don't like the delays either, <laughs> you know, but it's. It's the presentation. Anyway, so, um, all right, so we will do public now, and I only see two hands up, three hands up. Um, I can extend it to two minutes, uh, but then we really need to go to old business. Um, we'll do Kevin, Merrill, and then David, 
and then I think uh, I think we'll close it out because there's not a lot much more we can learn and beating up on DOT is not going to get us the information we want. So I will formalize that in an email to Rhonda and Zach um, for some kind of substantive, you know, statement that I can put in the record. Um, not only what I tried to memorialize here in my report as I'm writing as you speak, but you know, something else. Anyway, so Kevin, please go ahead. Could I also speak? Sorry, I, I raised my hand. Was that? Could I also I see? Okay, okay. So, so, okay. So, this is what we're going to do. We're going to hear Kevin. We're going to hear Merrill. We're going to hear David. We're going to hear Yafim, and then we're going to move on. Okay, thanks, Kevin. Go ahead. I think David's hand might be up from before, Eric. I haven't seen it come down, but I'll let him clarify. Um, well, when I get to them, we'll see. Okay, yeah. go ahead, um, Kevin. Yeah, you know, I, I think. Um, In two minutes, Kevin. So you know. Yeah. I, all right. <laughs> you tell me when it's time on the clock. Um, you know, I, I want to highlight here that that Meeker has been under discussion in this community for a decade. So since 2014, people in this neighborhood have been talking about major street redesign on Meeker that involves safe bike lanes and safer pedestrian path. Obviously, it's been a conversation for 70 years in terms of the interruptions the BQE causes. Um, what we were told, which was during the pandemic um, in May of 2021, that this project would be completely done by now not half done by the end of the year. We were told that phase one, which was concrete and signals, would be complete by the end of 2021. And then phase two, which was concrete and signals from Graham to Metro, would be done by the end of 2022. This is the first communication we've had about it in four months. The communication, again, all the caveats. Zach, I appreciate you. This is above, above your head. I understand that. But the fact that like this is what this is the way that this is coming to us not four months late or five months late or six months late but like there's been no updates um this was supposed to be done now and now we're being told that perhaps it will be 50 percent done a year late um in that time i just did the crash mapper data from may of 2021 to february of 2023 there have been 514 crashes on meeker avenue nine cyclists injured 13 pedestrians, pedestrians injured, 261 motorists injured, and two deaths, one of which was Molly Pearson, who was killed at Meeker and Skillman. Okay, this is not just an annoying delay. This is not something that we're going in a loop. This is real consequences for people in this community. This is deaths and injuries and in our day to day life. It is completely and totally unacceptable. Um, I don't understand how basically no work happened in 2022, right? a little bit of concrete work, but comparatively, a lot of work was done in 2021 and basically no work was done in 2022. And I just, you know, we need to get an update in writing. I'm going to be pushing on this at every single transportation committee meeting from here on out until it is done. We will be organizing people to come back to the space. We'll be pushing on DOT. You know, community members have died and been injured. It's totally unacceptable. Please bring that back to Keith, bring that back to the bike unit, bring that back to all the people that are supposed to be here today that sent you instead, Zach. So I, you know, I, I you know. Thanks, thanks, Kevin. Yeah, Eric, I just, you know, I, this, this. I know, I know, thank you. Uh, Meryl. And that's Meryl Laborde, right? Yeah, do you need me to spell okay. it? Um, sure, why not? L-A-B-O-R-D-E. Gotcha. Okay. Thanks. Uh, Please go ahead. So I live two, two in Kingsland and Meeker, and I don't know if this has come up before, but has DOT given us what the signal changes are going to be? Because the two that have happened so far have made the intersections much more chaotic and much harder to cross. They've eliminated the LPIs at both intersections, and I'm very worried that this is going to actually make things worse, especially as you're doing this piecemeal and you haven't, uh, like, because you're only doing little bits at a time, right now crossing Kingsland is incredibly dangerous. Crossing at North Henry is incredibly dangerous. Crossing at McGinnis has been incredibly dangerous. If that signals the next one to change, I'm worried it's gonna get worse. Uh, my next question would be, you said that we're going to do painting. What what painting are you going to do? Are you saying we'll be done through Metropolitan this year? Is that the goal? Um, are we doing this in another phase? And then 
uh, yeah, my other concern is that you're saying, oh, there might be delays to concrete work, but you said it takes only a few weeks to do that when we all were there for the concrete work in 2021 when it was months of nothing moving so like the construction barriers and whatnot would go out and then the work would be half finished for months at a time um so do you have actual data on how the signals will change and how that that will make the intersection safer and what is the actual scope of the painting for this year um, during the present, I'm looking at what's posted online right now for the presentation. We, we put it in words on how the signal changed. I know we did make diagrams, but I have to check whether we fully sent those public, but they're sitting somewhere. So it, in the worst, that worst is a weird way to say it, but in any case, we could show what the diagrams look like also. Um, but, um. The LPIs were a big concern actually for the project because we had just installed LPIs on the corridor and it was a concern to remove LPIs. So one of the things, especially at North Henry, what you'll see is the right turn off of North, North Henry is delayed by seven seconds. So it, the through movements allowed, but it, it we're still adding delays so that you get a little bit of a head start to cross the street. It's it's maybe what's made some of the signal work spiral into something that's a lot more work than just changing a timing or adding one or two signal heads. It's, it's usually a lot of signal heads. So, um, but, um, sorry, I'm trying to remember all the rest of the questions. Uh, oh, for painting. Um, yes. The goal yes. for painting is to have everything painted from the bridge to metropolitan, but with the caveat that the part between Graham and metropolitan won't have the crossings in it. It'll look like what the other sections look like mostly now where it's just painted by, within the parking bay. By, by when? Uh, um, from bridge to Metro by when? By the end of the year? By the end of the year. Yeah. That's, by, by the end of painting season, right? So like November. Yeah, that, that is the goal. The. The even more soon goal is to have just the bridge painted all the way to Graham with all the crossings, like with everything operating where you can fully go in between okay. the bridge and Graham. And that should happen okay. even quicker. But so the okay, concrete wait. work will be done to connect Morgan and Kingsland to what's already there. Like we yeah. will you will be removing a lane of traffic. Yes. And connecting the BQE section by this year. Yes, yes. That's really early on the list for concrete work. Um, to get really into the details, we are, uh, I was about to give you meeting dates, but maybe that's kind of weird, but, um, it's not that would early, be early April. We are going to break ground at Leonard and Lorimer first, because there's capital work that's about to go on there to build out those pedestrian, um, spaces that that's from years ago, but it just ends up that we overlap at the same time. So we're kind of rushing to do that work and then we're going to immediately go to Morgan. So I imagine Morgan, the work will start around May ish time. Um, so, and then once Morgan goes in. All we have to do is mark some crossings and finish up some signals that are mostly installed at this point. So, um, yeah, that's why I say I'm, it's, I'm pretty confident on that sometime during the summer, everything should link up where you can fully bike from the bridge to Graham. Uh, yeah, I, the construction is also very messy too, but I, I'm going to try to be positive as someone that's working on this project a lot. I try to stay positive and as many groups as we're coordinating and wrenches thrown okay. into it. Sorry, when you send me that, rambling. when you send me that statement, kind of put all that in there. Yeah. Definitely. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, thanks. Uh, for letting me speak. Uh, I cross Meeker every day to go to McCarran Park. I love it. Uh, very dangerous. And uh, I, I just wanted to say, this is just brainstorming off the top of my head. I've been attending a bunch of BQE visioning meetings, and a lot of them also talk about Meeker and revitalizing Meeker and revitalizing the enthusiasm. 
it'd be great to sort of take some of that momentum and like use that to, to push uh, this forward. Uh, maybe even incorporate some of the feedback and learnings from those visioning sessions. And uh, like, I, I know some of them were speaking about maybe a road diet on Meeker. It'd be awesome to just get that all out there instead of like redoing Meeker once and then redoing Meeker over and over again. Um, but yeah, just off the top of my head, thank you again. And uh, looking forward to more updates. Part, part of the idea of this quick project is that in the long term, it, it's sort of activating the space under the bridge. So um, we'll definitely take information from that. I, I had almost gone to that, but, uh, you know, this is a conflict. Because there was one tonight, actually, right, for North Brooklyn. Yeah. Sorry. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you, Yafin. Thank you, Zach. Um, okay, Ben, you're just under the gun here, but you are the last speaker, and then we're going to old business. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Um, just wanted to echo Yafin's um, mention of what we've been doing with, under the with the BQE road and Mika road diet stuff. Uh, I was one of the co-authors on a document we put together about how we can tie the Mika Road Diet into bigger uh, BQE work. I'm happy to send that over to you if you have an email that you're willing to share, um, just so you can see what the community has already been looking at um, and talking about for several months now. Um, is there a chat in here? or the, the, uh, I guess you could uh, send it not, to Eric. But yeah, uh, Ben, I'll tell you what. Email that to uh, to the board office to the transportation committee's attention, um, and I will put it in the record, and then I will forward it to DOT um, for and I'll report it out in uh, old business next month. Perfect. Okay. Great. Um, okay. Well, Eric, can I can I ask Zach one last question? Sorry to interrupt one last, you. One last question. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, just given the delay and timing of what we were told and what we're getting on Meeker, um, I thought I would just, since you're here, Zach, ask, we were told we would hear something on McGinnis and have a proposal from DOT and a presentation in winter of 2023, and we're now firmly in spring of 2023. I was wondering if you know when we'll be expecting an update it's, from, it's from McGinnis. It's from when I can answer that. It's coming. Yeah, and Rhonda, sure. Rhonda, I don't know if you have any further info on that, but I know that we're it's it's coming. Um, I know it's coming, but when's it coming? Like in the next month or two. Rhonda, can you? That is the plan. Say, yes. Got it. Okay, great. Okay, so I'm not wrong. That's good. Thank you. It's coming. Yes, Thank and that you. will be the only that will be the only item on the agenda that night. I I, I can can't imagine you. why. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, Thank you. All right. So, Okay, so that closes the item. Zach, sorry to beat you up, but I'm very upset. And uh, I, I really do appreciate the work that you do as an individual. I've seen it. It's good work, um, but not happy tonight. So, okay, uh, so I'll I'll be reaching out to Rhonda for a, um, uh, for a, you know, a nice DOT essay on on construction updates and timelines and punch lists and all that good, all that good stuff. And also, um, I'm sure you're taking notes on answer on the questions that came up from Merrill and other people. Um, I'm trying to memorialize it, but I'm also typing and thinking and whatever. So anyway, thank you, Zach. Um, Rhonda, I don't know if you want to stay on for old business, um, but uh, I'll stay you. around a little longer. You're the best. Okay. All right, so uh, old business. Thank you, Zach. Yes, thank you, Zach. Thanks, okay, everyone. So, okay. Uh, uh, Eric? Yes, thank you. Yes. Um, um, we received a correspondence from Rhonda. We appreciate you, Rhonda, uh, about the uh, intersection on Graham and Jackson, get traffic lights, and also the stop signs on um, Wood Point Road, both directions. Uh, and the correspondence, um, we're going to get the findings in the spring. I just want to make sure that's on course for the traffic lights and in the summer for the stop signs. I don't know off the top of my head, but um, I know that you and I had uh, email correspondence. So I think the best bet would be for you to just um, follow up with me in an email and I'll follow up with the people I get that information from. Okay. Yeah. So William with that, 
uh, if, if you do that, obviously you always do copy me and the board on it, but do that. And um, Steve reminded me that um, because the Passover is late this year, we will not have a uh, full board meeting until April 18th. Um, so there's plenty of time to uh, put that in the record. Okay, just one thing, just to remind people that our city councilwoman Jennifer is having a workshop, a town hall meeting with DLT regarding BQE on the 30th. And um, so just letting folks know about that. Thank you. Oh, at two, uh, 211 Ansel Street, where we used to have our community board meetings. That's, I think that's on, that's about Grand Street. I, mean, I don't think that's about BQE. Yeah, that is not and, about the BQE. It's a workshop on the bike network um, changes in well, um, the, the, the core. The correspondence we got for Jennifer is a town hall meeting, but that being said, um, there'll be other questions re related to um, there um, is no, there is there is a BQE town hall that she's doing, but the but it's that's a different date because I know the right, third. That's I just not RSV, it. I just I just RSVP'd for the thirtieth uh, for the Grand Street thing, so that's that's the only reason I just did it before we jumped on this meeting, but. Um, I, you know what? I'll, I'll follow up and I'll put it in the report. And it, William, if you find out before I do, just uh, just shoot me an email. Okay, though. Uh, but uh, but uh, that's actually new business. Well, that's not really because we worked for ourselves with Grand Avenue, Grand Street for quite a few months. So um, so yeah. So that's uh, two eleven eight. So you can go to the con uh, the congresswoman elevating her before her time to the councilwoman's um, uh, website and get details on that. Um, that workshop. Okay, so ah, sorry. Um, okay, um, so old business. I just want to um, um, uh, quickly go through. Uh, well, I don't. I don't really have a lot of old business. I'll just say that we got a res we got a response, which is unusual um, from uh, uh, Inspector. Uh, uh, Inspector uh, G of the Highway Patrol um, regarding a letter that we sent um, regarding the incident at um, uh, Grand and Graham. Uh, I think I sent that distributed to the board, so uh, uh, you should have read it. Um, and I think it was distributed to the Transportation Committee, but it was just uh, um, the determination by. Uh, NYPD was that um, the, the motorist, um, the motorcycle, um, was, uh, you know, he was illegally driving in, in a motorcycle, was illegally in the bike lane. Um, and according to what they have, he tried to beat the truck um, uh, who had the right of way to make the turn. And the rest is tragedy, but um, I just want to update people and that letter is out there. So uh, check your email for it. If you're on the committee. Um, Eric, can I ask a question about that? Yeah. I mean, understanding sure. that maybe he wasn't on a bicycle, but do motorists ever have the right of way making a right turn crossing a bike lane like that? Um, does a motorist ever have the right of way? Well, I mean, as far as I understand, they're supposed to yield to, um, they're supposed to yield to pedestrians and cyclists, um, that are in the crosswalk. If, if, if the light is giving them right of way. Um, the, the pedestrians or the cyclists in this case, though, um, what I understand is that this was not the case. And this was, and this was a motorized vehicle, not a bike and should have been in the lane behind the truck and not trying to beat them on, beat them on the right. You know, not to say, you know, we want people to get hurt, but, you know, you got to be smart on both sides. So. Um, anyway, that's all I have for old business. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll get you a, a better answer, Paul. Um, uh, we have Williams old business. Uh, do you have old business, Paul? Uh, I do have a couple old business items. 
a couple. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. All right, go ahead. Well, you nixed all my new business items, so I... <laughs> <laughs> not nixed exactly. Just you know, put it off. Anyway, go ahead. Well, one of the things I wanted to um, ask about was the loading zone. I emailed about this a couple weeks ago, Rhonda, um, at Mass Beth and Olive. Yep. yep. Um, um, what do you I, think? What they? The, uh, what do I think about it? Is that what you said? Yeah, I mean the placement of it isn't really that practical. Yeah, so. I you, so you know I, it's really it's not my call, but I have to say that I kind of advocated for what you were saying, you know, uh, and asked the person that um, the that design, you know, Karen, mm -hmm. to weigh in because I it's not it's really you know I didn't feel like it's my place to say. That I think that they should do that, but I, yes. So we're it's an ongoing conversation, and and I want them to you know to understand what's there right now. Doesn't it sounds like it's not working? Yeah, it's on the opposite side of the street from where it makes sense for the mm -hmm. everything. So okay, all right. Um, I'll I can check back in next month. Sure, but I mean, um, I I don't. You know, I would anticipate that you're going to get a response on its own timeline, probably before the next transportation committee meeting. Okay. My second question was about um, what I presented last week, Eric, about adding a protected bike lane around Macri Triangle um, on Metropolitan. Right. And we didn't take a vote or do anything formal, um, so I'm not sure the best way to follow up. Um, um, or I might suggest that we take a vote on it if that's well, possible. not, no, not, not like just coming out of the blue from a, a, a not, not coming out of the blue, out of the blue, but, um, there, there were going to be, you were going to, uh, I thought make some changes to the presentation and then. And then we were going to, I thought we were going to send it to DOT for a. For something, or you're you gonna put it in the portal. Did, did did you put it in the portal? Uh, yes, I put it in the portal. And did you send Did you send me the the thing? I did. The, I sent I sent the number. Okay, okay. Um, so let's table that for now, and um, I'll follow up. I'll I'll I'll, I'll put. Okay, let me follow up with Rhonda on what's in the portal. And I will report it out in this report in April, and then and then we'll or yeah at the April meeting, and then we'll take it up next month. Okay. Okay. Uh, this this is what I'm just saying. I apologize. I misread the email. You guys were correct about Grand Street. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Macri Triangle. Sorry, Macri Triangle. Bike lane and future battle <laughs> with NYPD. Okay, great. Okay, so there's that. Okay, um, Paul, your hand is down. I assume you're done. Uh, well, my with third all, thing had all, to do with, with all this. Okay, go ahead. My third thing had to do with um, what I about Crash Mapper. Um, uh -huh. Maybe that's new business, but that's um, new business. Okay, fine. I'll save it for new business. Okay, great. Um, okay, so we'll do Bronwyn, uh, then Steve, then Katie, and then we'll go to public. Bronwyn, go ahead. Old business. Sorry, I keep putting my hand down and said I'm muting. Um, okay. I just wanted to ask about um, the sanitation, parking, two sides. Thing. I have sent an email to um, Ms. Cunningham at the SNY, and I have yet to get a response. Um, I also, if there's a resident on the north side that's um, been emailing the office that I haven't been able to follow up with either. Um, so, uh, what, is the, what is the process? Do you know? Like, I just remember last year that they did a investigation and found that we met the sanitation scores for going down to two days from four and then that was the end of it 
Right. So DSNY has to sign off, and then all DOT does is put up signs once they get the sign off from DSNY. But I need I need answers on both questions from sanitation and um, uncharacteristically, Ms. Cunningham is not getting back to me. So I have to track okay. her down a little bit and follow up. But thanks okay. for reminding me. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Okay, uh, Katie. Um, thanks, Eric. So, uh, I could have brought this up with the BQE old business. Um, I just wanted to share that, you know, North Brooklyn parks, um, as many of, you know, was a community outreach partner with DOT on the BQE process. So we've been doing some outreach over the last few months, which has, uh, culminated. Um, we've submitted our report to DOT analyzing that feedback. Um, some folks, uh, submitted some longer form feedback, um, uh, uh, Benji's um, um, comment about the community report um, is included in that. So, Eric, I'm going to send that to your committee so that you all have it for your records. Um, that's one thing. Uh, the other thing is, um, uh, you know, just the the, the traffic um, and lack of street uh, safety and regulation around um, under the K Bridge Park that um, continues to be an issue, and I continue to bring it up. Um, we are approaching spring, um, a spring season again, where we anticipate park usership uh, to increase as it did last spring. And um, the regulations that we discussed as possibilities last spring um, have yet to happen. So um, I will continue bringing it up. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Thanks. Yeah. Please. Uh, if. Yeah. I mean, talk to talk to Ben and see if you just want to like send that to the committee and. I'm assuming you're talking about the same document, yeah. Uh, yeah, but I mean, I, I can I can send it as well. I mean, it's you know because ours is bigger, but yeah, they could they should definitely send it separately as okay. well. Okay, but fine. Okay, sense. great. Okay, thanks. Um, Steve Kessler. Thank you, Eric. Um, yeah, I just want to give folks a head up that um, through the Environmental Protection Committee received a notice from from DEC that. The remediation of 210 Greenpoint Avenue, the former Speedway station, is be, is going to commence soon. So it's going to be, uh, you know, uh, a mess over there with, um, you know, heavy vehicles going in and out. The, the gate is going to be on Greenpoint Avenue. Um, and then related to that, um, you know, we, as kind of overflow from our deliberations about the remediation, there was a worry about the uh, fire. The fire station vehicles coming across um, on Greenpoint Avenue, trying to make the turn south onto uh, McGinnis and being able to clear the Jersey barriers there. So we uh, request we requested an inspection of that intersection, and they've been really take you know it's been a delayed response, but they finally came back to us saying they're. FDNY is doing a district wide inspection of all the traffic diets that are potentially affecting the efficiency of FDNY responses um, in, in our area, including that one. So stay tuned uh, for that. So um, that was it. Thanks, Steve. And, and um, uh, so, so that the committee and the public knows, Steve sent me a, um, a picture of a, a, a dangerous bus um, loading unloading situation that I guess you caught today, right, Steve, or somebody sent you yeah, it was, it was, yeah, it was a couple of days ago. Um, I was walking by and it just yeah, it saw the, you know, the, the bus stop sign there uh, right, right next to where the, the uh, construction site gate will be. So, right. We'll be so I just wanted, okay. So I just want, you had asked if uh, the bus stop needs to be moved and um, I reached out to Andy Inglesby at MTA um, who got back to me right away, and um, we got on a on a three way call with um, I don't have his name offhand, but uh, the person that was responsible for taking uh, notification from contractors construction sites that we're going to be moving into the sidewalk, we're doing this thing, etc. And so he's going to follow up on whether that bus stop needs to be moved or what the situation is, because as far as he can see from the ready, um, readily available documentation is that they never applied 
uh, or let MTA know that there was going to be a conflict with the bus stop. So um, Andy's working on that for me. And um, uh, since we won't meet till the eighth, since we won't have the report till the eighteenth, I might actually have a chance to put that um, in this report for the record. So, so That's, thanks for uh, sending that to me. No, definitely, and wait, it's awesome that you jumped right on it. So, uh, thank you for that. Um, yep, no problem. Sorry, Steve, uh, Eric, can I use a clarification clarification from Steve about what you mean, Steve, by traffic diets? I mean, I I know what you're talking about over by you know construction. The Greenpoint Avenue sidewalk is blocked for pedestrians because that's the way I go to Key Food every day when I'm going mm -hmm. on. Green. Um, but what do you mean by traffic diets? That they're well, I think in look reference to diets. the in intersection, it's the narrowing of the roadway on McGinnis Boulevard where um, Jersey Barrier was replaced in into the street as a, a detour for pedestrians because the, the construction parking, shed parking extended lane. to the curb. Um, right, and they're in the parking lane. There, yes, yes, right. Okay, so I just want to clarify because it's not a narrowing of the of the travel lanes where the fire trucks would go. It would be the the barriers that are in the parking lane where cars would normally be or where a bus would be, and because the fences are blocking the pedestrian sidewalk, which we've been asking to have cleared since you know I, you've been asking as long as I've been asking, um, and they carved out a little piece of it. I just saw today, but not the entire thing. Um, yeah. Right. That's correct. They, yeah, just um, in the corner there for some reason. Okay. I just want to get clarification about that. Okay, thank you. Yeah. yeah, this is this is on my radar for folks to know. That's why when Steve sent me that today, I was like right on right on top of it because this, you know, Bozina Kaminsky brought it up to me two years ago when they first put up the when the when the gas station first closed, and because I'm on that. I'm over there all the time. I was like, this is never going to work, right? So, it, and guess what? It's not working. So anyway, we're, we're it's it's on my radar. It's on a couple committee members' radar, and we're going to keep And Kevin, it's definitely on your radar. So, okay. Um, so thanks. Uh, what do, 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 do? Okay, so we will do Ryan, Zach, and then Kevin, and then new business. So, but uh, we're on the two-minute rule. So. It's 9-11 and we are approaching 9-30. Okay, Ryan, go ahead. Hello? Did I unmute, unmute yourself? Ryan, you're muted. All right, okay. There Thank you, you go. Duh. Right. Um, I just wanted to make sure, I don't know if I missed it, but that we discussed or like the, there was a traffic death of cyclists New at business. Johnson & Morgan. New business. Uh, I got ah. it. Okay. Uh, uh, Zach, sorry. Yeah, thank you very much. I'll try to keep it as brief as possible. Just checking in on an update for a commercial. Um, we've noticed that stop signs have been put in uh, without much discussion into the community. There's no lines or crosswalks. Um, I know a representative of DOT is on the line. I'd love to just get a quick update. The stop signs almost have made things more dangerous as cars ignore them, but pedestrians expect cars to stop now. So, uh, Zach, just to be specific, uh, when were they put in and, and where? Uh, they're put in. There's a stop sign now at um, the corner of Franklin and Commercial. It's now went from a one way stop to a three way stop. So, uh, and when did that go in? I think it went in within like the last week? month or so. Um, okay, but, so since the last transportation committee meeting. Yeah, pretty much. And we've been sitting there. Uh, I've been talking to people. I mean, maybe it's been at most six weeks. It might have been just put in right before the last meeting. Uh, okay. But I wanted to wait and see what was going on and hear sure. people's opinions. Essentially, a great uh, gesture. Um, just they're not being used. So people expect people, cars to stop and cars are not noticing them. There's no enforcement right. of the no parking, you know, uh, no standing zones, et cetera. So cars are missing, right. there's no lines. So just want okay. to get where was, on that. And if- Wait, where, uh, we, where was the other? You said there were two. So where's the other one? Frankly, yeah, the one, zone, where's the other one? Oh, no, it's a three-way stop now because it's, uh, you know, two-way oh, street. I see, yes. yes. Yes, okay, 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 all right. Um, so there's that question and just making sure DOT is still on schedule to present uh, by the end of May. Uh, June. Oh, sorry, yeah. 
Rhonda, you still there? Yeah, so um, we, we, this is like the marking season hasn't even started yet. Um, but, um, and I wouldn't know off the top of my head about a, like a, one specific intersection in, in gotcha. you know, in all of the five community boards that I cover in that way. Like, I don't know every yeah. time a stop sign goes in. I certainly don't know that, you know, I don't even think the people that put the markings down could answer the question about exactly when the markings will go down. Like I said, um, we marking season starts in April generally, and it's um, temperature related. Of course. But it can't start before a certain time because I think contracts go into action. Um, so certainly, uh, Eric, if you want to send me this location, yes. I can follow up on that and make sure that wow. it's um, just by asking about it, it will perhaps elevate it on the list. Priority. Right, okay. exactly. Okay, great. Um, and, and I'm Zach, sorry, just, there was a I'm second sorry, question. Ahead. What was it? He had a second question. I'm sorry, oh, I'm just, not feeling well, so my brain's not oh, fully functional. Right go ahead. Now. I'm sorry, Rhonda. Go ahead, Zach. Second, second point. Yeah, this, I just wanted to make sure things are still on schedule for uh, oh, DOT for to present to in June uh, for the DOT to present. I, I don't know if it was for the transpo committee or to the full committee. I just wanted to make sure that was still on schedule as we're it just just to be clear. It won't be a presentation. It'll be they'll release the results of the study. So we won't be having okay. them. But uh, if I have that study released, uh, I will uh, report it out and it'll be part of the report for Jim. You, you're talking Perfect. about West End commercial. The, yeah, that whole, yeah. Well, well, the whole commercial, whatever, what's being studied now, and then the request that the, the board and the electeds put in for uh, 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 another look at um, West and One commercial yeah. and, the, and, the, and the reverse. Oh, yeah, but I mean, that was in conjunction with the fact that we have a capital project coming there. And yeah. we are, my understanding is we didn't, we have not yet made a formal request, but my understanding is that we are still on target to make a presentation about um, on that uh, capital project by out, you know, by June. Um, and I think it would oh, okay. probably be up to the um, executive committee to say if it should go to the full board or the transportation committee. Perfect. Yeah, that would, that would, um, well, that's the sticking point because it would have to go on the June agenda because we're off July and August. And um, the committee wouldn't even be able to take it up until September. So, but it, but it, the work wouldn't happen this summer anyway, right? I correct. Okay. It, this right. would so, be really uh, just the very first step in, you know. Right. Okay. So there's no conversations in July. I, I just want to make sure things keep moving, as given the urgency of the problem, is there are more buildings are getting finished. Well, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, there people are, are moving in. There, you know, sometimes they do emergency meet. The board does emergency meetings in July and August, but it really has to be something like some like land use item that's on the clock or something like really crazy. Um, gotcha. uh, I just want to make sure that this is, is look, moving. The, the, here's, here's the thing, Zach. Here's, here's what I'll tell you, Zach. You have the electeds fighting for you on this issue. The board has supported um, the study for what, what you had asked for. So this is on DOT's radar in a big way. And this capital project is happening and we're getting we're getting from directly from DOT Rhonda that, you know, that we're going to yeah. have a presentation in June. So, you know, the, the wheels are turning. Um, and, you know, we just have to like, like live through the, the process. At this <laughs> I point. don't appreciate but, it. But I, you know, but I, I, I appreciate it. Just to keep I, putting momentum, you know, I'm yeah, just, man, I'm just that's, that's what going. you do. <laughs> that's what you do. And then I, I heard the bureaucracy. So, or, or we, I got heard you. The bureaucracy. So, okay. All right. Great. Thanks, Zach. Um, uh, but, um, you know, Eric, I just yeah, want to say yeah, this, though, that, that, that separate and apart from this, uh, capital project that's, that's been in development, um, there was this request from the elected and, and the community and, uh, the transportation committee that we consider these uh i think yes. two two different one way conversions mm -hmm. as i guess part of the larger project so 
I, I mean, I'm not here telling you that I know that that could be fully evaluated. Um, no, no, right. I, I don't know. know the timeline for that. I know. Okay. I'm not saying that. I mean, I think that you phrased in your letter oh, that sorry. you were if, looking for a response well, by we wanted a certain you, time. Yes. You, you know, we have to put the pressure too. So, you know. Okay, but I just want to be on record that I I I, you know. I know you're not promising okay. that. I know you're no, not. No, but okay. but but it is my understanding. I mean, I'm not promising anything because none of it is within my <laughs> control. But right, um, right. but my understanding is that we are uh, would be coming with the show you the capital project. Great. Okay. Right. Love it. Okay. Thank you. Great. Very much. Uh, and hopefully, hopefully we can fit that into the June full board agenda, but we will see because I, because it's, because, <laughs> uh, I think you had said the 23rd, the study would be done and ready and all that other stuff in the board meeting that is like the, old, the 10th or 11th. I can't, I can't remember anyway, but we'll see. We'll see, but it's not happening this summer. So we'll, we'll, it's on my radar. I'm not forgetting about it, and Zach, you're not forgetting about it. So, and that other <laughs> and, and and other and other people are beating me up about it. So, uh, we're we're on it. Okay. Uh, hey, Greg, thank thank you. you, Rhonda. You're welcome. Appreciate you following okay. the crosswalk too. Um, okay, we are fast running out of time, and I have two two items that I really need to do for new business. So, Kevin, make it quick, please. Old business. The one thing I just Rhonda for your clarification, those direction reversals that the electeds were asking for were reviewed and basically presented to CB1 in 2016. Karen Nieves sent me along the presentations from 2016. Um, so that is what's under consideration. That's what the electeds are asking for. It's not an it, it's new insofar as it's another letter. It's an it's on new paper, um, but it's not a new request for DOTs. That should be helpful, I think, in incorporating that into the capital plan. Um, I wanted to also just briefly note regarding that grand and gram. I know Eric said, you know, both sides in this regard, but something I do want to point out is that that truck that killed that moped rider, um, obviously the cops said, oh, you know, he came out of nowhere. He made the right turn, et cetera, et cetera. But also like that truck had 30 traffic violations um, in the last like, like less than six years, last five years. 30 traffic violations, including 17 speeding violations in school zones. So, I mean, just if we're putting on the record um, things about an incident that, you know, uh, cast, you know, I don't know, maybe unfairly cast blame on a victim. Um, I know that's not your I'm intention. I'm not casting blame no, on a victim. I, I, I know that's I, not your intention. I'm reporting what the, right. what I know, the Highway but, Patrol said to me. Or, yes, but, but okay. oftentimes that is something that people say that the Highway Patrol do. So okay. I, you know, but I just want to make that, make sure that's on the record. Um, and the other thing, I, I, I do hope we cover in new business, the two cyclists who have been killed in the district yes. in the last month. But uh, then finally, just piggybacking on Steve, and I really appreciate Steve for bringing it up. Um, I walked past, as I always do, that corner of Greenpoint Avenue and McGinnis Boulevard today. And uh, basically 10% of the sidewalk was open at the corner. The sidewalk on McGinnis and the sidewalk on Greenpoint, like 95% of it was blocked on each side, but 5% on the corner was open. So they had rebuilt the tiniest little portion of it, this little tiny pie slice of sidewalk um, but they, they solved only 10% of the problem. So, uh, you know, I, I just wanted to flag that for Rhonda again, it's exhausting to continue to bring this up. As Steve has said, we've been bringing this up for a couple of months now. Um, it seems like they, if they were asked to solve the problem, they did not solve the problem. And I just, um, it's I, back to the drawing board, I guess, but. They really need to, if they're starting this construction soon and there's going to be crews on the ground, they need to move those fences back to give the public access to the sidewalk, please. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, so thanks, Kevin. Um, all right, new business. Um, Ryan already brought this up. I'll, I'll credit her with it. Um, so, uh, yes, we unfortunately have to report again. Um, and I know Paul is going to bring this up too um that we've had two fatalities <clears throat> within a week of each other um uh, uh uh well it's unclear whether he was uh, uh, working uh, as a delivery person but it was at 6 a.m i believe 
on Saturday the 11th. Um, riding uh, in the bike lane on Kent, there's the whole section with the Jersey barriers and there was a flatbed parked in the bike lane. Um, it's a little unclear as to how Why he hit it, and, and it, we haven't gotten the, the full police report, but guess what? We always do a letter whenever there is a fatality on our streets, unfortunately. And so we will be, um, I'll need a vote uh, to send an inquiry letter on that fatality, um, but then also a letter on Eugene Schroeder, um, who was uh, killed at the intersection of Johnson and Morgan. Um, uh, according to press reports, in this case, he definitely had the right of way, and uh, this truck uh, just killed him and took off. And I know the cops are looking for him. Uh, whoever was driving this truck, I haven't heard any follow up reporting. Maybe if I'm, I'm sure you would have, those that reached out to me already would have sent me a, an update. Um, but uh, yeah, we just don't we just don't know where this uh, where this driver is. So. Um, I will ask for one motion to uh, to write both letters, um, which is really unfortunate. Um, uh, and um, yeah, so uh, Eric, I'll, I'll, make motion. A motion. I'll make a motion, yeah. but I kind of want to one. I kind of want to ask if we could add a little color to the one about the Kent Avenue bike lane and request that there be some kind of consequence for whoever's, you know, whoever left a flatbed in the bike lane like that. I mean, clearly it's incredibly dangerous and, you know, they're, I, yeah, we're well, going to get, get the letter oh, back from the highway patrol. It's like, we investigate it. Someone left a flatbed, you know, but I feel like there should be more. Right. Than that. Well, I, here's, so, yes, I, I hear you. Um, and I'm, I'm not. Hey, Eric, it's Ryan. Can I add a, a can I throw out a suggestion that the community board writes a letter to two trees asking them to well, explain? Paul, Paul had, had sent that to me. Um, I, you know, I would do that, but we don't. We don't know specifically that they were servicing two trees. I mean, obviously they were probably no, no, servicing two trees. I mean, they, it, it, they, we do know. Fake. So I didn't see I, that in I the reporting. Know. It's, Do you it's, know that? It's been report. It's been reported, and Dave Bambino <clears throat> has confirmed. So I would okay. say, all right, two trees isn't two trees isn't saying it's not them. They're saying that a mo mopeds aren't allowed in the bike lane, and it's an unfortunate accident to to a, that. But the death happened to a lawbreaker because he's on a moped. He's not supposed to be in the bike lane, but like they're not saying that they weren't parked there at all. So I would say a letter is highly recommended. Yeah, I mean, this is, uh, uh, so first of all, I understand, but um, it's, it's a letter no, to trees will answer. Like it's a, it's a fish, it's a community board officially calling into question this. Two tree, it's not, I mean, two trees will answer. They will spin it. They're not hiding from this, but I think as a transportation committee and as people who ride in that bike lane and care about safety, us not wanting to send a letter just saying, hey, you who presented, who wooed us, who come before our community board numerous times, every committee, will you answer us in letter or come in person? What happened? I, I guarantee you they will. It's like, but we shouldn't be scared to, to ask them to be, to be accountable for a death that uh, happened know. on their doorstep. I, yes, I, I understand. My thing is, so, okay, fine. If somebody wants to make that motion, I, I will entertain that motion. I would like to make that motion. Make, make that motion, Paul. I want to make a motion that we write a letter <laughs> about Eugene Schroeder, about the moped rider, and we send one to two trees. We don't have to explicitly blame them, but we can say. Okay, wait, wait, wait. This has to be okay. So we can't. Okay, it can't. This can't all be one motion. Okay. Because it's three. Okay. So first, let's do a motion on the on the um, fatality, the boilerplate fatality ladder. I can't believe I have to say boilerplate, but that's what we live in. 
Letter to uh, all the car highway patrol. DA uh, and let's see. They're both they're both in the nine oh, right? Yeah. Right? South first, right? So that's the nine oh. Okay, and nine oh, sorry. Nine oh regarding Schroeder and Antonio. Sick of pen. Uh, okay. Uh, second. Okay. So, DOT to write a letter to Highway Patrol District Attorney's Office in the 90th Precinct regarding uh, details on the incidents at South First and Kent and Morgan and Johnson. Second. Vega. William Vega seconds. Got you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Okay. Okay. All right. So thank you. Okay. Now, new motion. Uh, CB1. CB1 to draft letter to two. Trees management and um, has it been right? I mean, no, let's not get into the weeds. Well, two trees management, and then they can answer for the whoever their contractor is. Um, two tree, uh, sorry, CB1 to drop the letter to two trees management. Um, explaining. their tolerance of their contractors to illegally block designated, legally designated bike lanes Bike lanes. CB1 to draft the letter to Two Trees Management explaining their tolerance of their contractors to illegally block designated bike lanes with construction and, and other vehicles. Yes? I hear no complaints. Uh, so that's Paul. And is there a second? Oh, am I dropping out? I'll second my the process. Okay, my earbuds are wigging out here. Um, okay, so second. It's... All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, opposed? Stains? Unanimous. Yeah, okay, great. Okay, uh, so I'll draft those up. Um, and, uh, you know, the other, what I was going to say, Paul, when you, when you were talking about this is, and the reason I hesitated was not because I didn't think that we should actually write this letter necessarily, but I want to know why the 9-0 and the 9-4 can't drive by in a squad car, see that bullshit, and then write them a ticket. Like, every, every time they go around the block, every change of shift. Like, why? It's not hard. Like, the, the NYPD and, and everybody is looking for money for tickets all over the city. Like, this is a no-brainer. Are they, you know, what is the problem? Like, this is happening. Noel Hidalgo is, like, posting threads about all the, all the crap that's going on around the Navy Yard and over by... Um, uh, uh, what is it, Van Dam or whatever, like, or, or Kai or whatever the hell he posted it was about. Like, I'm like, what is wrong with the NYPD? And we should take this to public safety committee. Um, this is something that Ronan should take up because, like, did, like, look, we're transportation, right? We're like, 
make this nice open street, do this good thing here. We don't like your, like this presentation, et cetera, et cetera. But this is a public safety issue, you know? And I know it kind of like, you know, obviously we have oversight on this, but it's like, this is stuff that should be coming up when the, when the, when the NCOs appear before Ronan to answer questions from the public, this should be a public safety committee. And I'll, I'll talk to Ronan about it. And, um, I think he just publishes his agenda for the public safety committee, but you know, this can be taken up in new business or, or whatever. And don't forget, we have community council meetings that happen every month for both the nine, four and the nine Oh, that is sponsored by them. It's on their website when they happen. Um, so, you know, folks that are exercised about this should go torture them at those meetings because, uh, they can't get away. Um, you know, they don't, they don't like to answer our, our calls for whatever reason, or it takes forever for them to get back to us. Well, I won't say that about Captain Fahey because she's, she's a good egg, but I mean, you know, there's been a lot of times where the, and particularly the nine oh just never get back to us on things and it's super frustrating. So this is a public safety thing. Um, and there's a community council thing and we should torture them there. So I'll get off my soapbox now because we are at 9.35 and I am over time. Um, uh, is there any pressing new business, Mitty? Well, Eric. Um, oh, um, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. I just wanted to mention that, you know, I attended the Brooklyn CB2 Transportation Committee last week and I was impressed that they start out by reviewing the crash mapper data from the previous month. Um, it only takes about five minutes at the beginning of the meeting just to sort of like assess, you know, what ha what's been happening, what are the problem areas. They put together some charts and graphs that kind of just like remind everybody like why we're sitting through these three hour meetings to begin with. I think it's a good way just to kind of like, you know, get it, get everyone on the same page at the beginning of the meeting. Um, because it's sort of unfortunate that, you know, we're talking about these deaths at the very tail end when there's just a handful of people left and everybody's tired. Um, so I don't know if I have a specific motion or, I mean, I would suggest maybe we try that and see, you know, if we think it's a good practice. Um, I'd be happy to work on putting something together, but um, just kind of wanted to throw that out there for reactions. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Or, I, I, I'm so, like I said in, in my email, I'm sympathetic to this. Um, I just, our time is always so tight. And um, I don't know, I, I don't know if starting the meeting with it is, is the best. I'm always happy to like make it part of the agenda as like, once we've gone through the regular business and then we go into new and old business, like, so it's part of the agenda, but not new old business. Um, I don't know, let, let, let me think about it. And, um, you know, we can, we can have a discussion on this, uh, over the next month via email and start a thread because it's internal, um, for the committee. So let's, let me think about it and, let, and we'll do it that way. Okay. That sounds fine. Okay. Okay. And then, and then maybe. If you want to do a mock up, Paul, of like, you know, what you're actually talking about and then like send it to me and like, you know, I, I hear, I understand what you're, what, I think I understand what they're doing, but, and I, and I can like probably jump, uh, give the uh, BKO to uh, committee chair uh, a call uh, and, and talk to him about it. But anyway, that's, we'll think about it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Let's think about it. maybe it's even just something that I mean, if I have time, I could put it together and just email it to everybody before the meeting. We can just review it on our own or something before. Sure. And then it'll be a, a standard part of the report. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll give it some more okay. thought. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Um, uh, any other new business? We are eight minutes over. Kevin, quickly, please. Go ahead, Kevin. Eric, thank you, Eric. I just, um, I, it's, it's new business. I think it's, you know, it's connected to this stuff that we're talking about on Morgan. It's connected to all these conversations we're having about the Greenway on commercial. It's connected to McGinnis Boulevard. You know, I mean, I just, I, I, I feel your frustration, Eric, about 
you know, uh, like what are the cops even doing most of the time, right? When it comes to this sort of stuff, right? You have on West Street and on Kent, you have dozens of vehicles, including literal, mm -hmm. you know, like flatbeds parked in the bike lane that are so dangerous. Um, you know, but I mean, this is this is the thing, like with, with Meeker, right? In two years, there's been 514 crashes on Meeker. You could not have enough police officers to enforce the dangerous driving that is happening on Meeker. You could not have enough police officers to enforce the dangerous conditions that are in place every single day in so many of these spaces. And it's one of the reasons why I appreciate this committee and the conversations that are happening and the advocacy in the neighborhood, because folks are saying that like these changes have to come through design. They have to come through the way that we design the spaces. A physical metal or stone bollard at the Kent bike lane, at the at the entrance and exit of each bike lane, which Manhattan bike lanes have, which many other cities bike lanes have, would make it impossible for two trees to park anything in that bike lane, right? They would make it impossible, right? These turning signal things, the turning radiuses that we're talking about, what killed Eugene Schroeder, a vehicle making that turn and hitting and killing him, could have been solved or fixed by a protected separated lane on Morgan by bulb outs that allowed for turning radiuses but slowed vehicles down. So they can't take turns at 30 miles an hour. They've got to slow to 10 miles an hour. That's what we're talking about on Barry. Like it's it like that's why a lot of us are here. And I think that like I feel the frustration. I'm feeling the frustration because it's like these are problems that we can solve by design. We're asking the committee to solve them by design. We're like I could go yell at the police all day, but it's like ultimately DOT has to redesign these spaces in our streets, in our public realm to make them safer. They can. And that's what we're asking for. I, you know, I, there's not enough cops in the world, right? We can get a rock and fix the problem in a lot of these places, a literal rock, not a police officer, you know, and all the overtime and all that sort of stuff that comes with it. You can put a rock in a lot of these spaces right. and fix the problem. Some concrete. Okay. I hear you. I just, okay. I don't know. I just don't want that to go unsaid because it's like, I, 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 I think it's this narrative that we can like arrest our way or enforce our way out of this problem. I'm not saying that. I'm I not saying, I know, I know, I know I that it's, we have people. to design our way out of this, but it, I'm, I'm just saying that there's low hanging fruit and I don't understand why they're not, why they're not grabbing it. So, okay. So, to. well, why not? They want money. The city I, wants money. Like here's, here's low hanging fruit. There, here's a, here's a $125 ticket. Like just waiting to be picked off the off the violation tree. Like, come on, it's like no bread. Anyway, so we gotta end it. Thank you, Kevin. Um thank you, thank you everybody. Uh I wanted anybody from the public that's still here that spoke under a minute. I love you. Um and uh yeah. <laughs> Transportation <laughs> okay. committee. Woo, for the win. Okay, meeting adjourned. Thank you everybody for coming. This was a great meeting. Appreciate you all. Thank you, Joanna, and we'll see you next month. And we appreciate, and we appreciate, and Eric, we appreciate you. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Thank all you, right. Eric. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Good job, Eric. Have a good night. Good Thanks, night. all. Thanks, everybody. Bye.